basically what I've done is uh, capoeira, uh, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, dancing, like Latin dancing. And it's funny because fighting and dancing are similar to each other, right? Like capoeira was made in Brazil because they wanted to learn how to fight, mm -hmm. but they were slaves. So they didn't want the rulers the masters to see them practicing fighting because the reason they were fighting is because they wanted to do a revolution ah. against the, the, the enemy, you know, the masters. Uh -huh. So they're like, if we made a dance, which is called capoeira and we are practicing fighting through the dance, they're never going to know. So what they would do is they would, they would be literally practicing the fight and then a police would be around and they right away turn on the music. People are playing the drums and they continue They're the practicing. Yeah. What a great story. That's Capoeira, great. man. Yeah. Wow, what a great story. Yeah. Taking, taking something that is intense and in a blink of a second, you can transform it to something flowy and playful. Yeah. Look what you can even learn with, from that. Yeah. <laughs> right? You can, you can win, win your opponent, which is whatever you're living in life, while, while dancing with it. Yes, yes. It doesn't mean you're going to be soft. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of dancing, because we <clears throat> met in Toronto. Mm -hmm. are, we, are we actually on right now? Or? Yeah, we're on. Of we're, course we're on. We're, of the, course we're on. It started. Yeah, yeah. We're having a conversation. Ah, you don't even think okay, about it. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's cool. It started way before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it taking a piss. <laughs> oh, for sure, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I, I want to keep, I want to keep the, the, you know, life as free of being here. As possible uh -huh. so i just try to minimize like weird thoughts right like a simple example um so martha watches all the podcasts right mm. and uh all, obviously the whole team watches them too mm. and one idea that they came up with is do an intro yeah. right do an intro yeah. so intro like not during the podcast but like after sort of like What is the podcast going to be about? Like, I don't know what this podcast is going to be about. We're talking. Damn. Who, who the fuck knows? Yeah. But then I thought, is an intro really aligned with me? Yeah. It's not. Like, I don't even like intros. Like, like a Jordan Peterson inter, uh, intro or Joe Rogan intro, intro. I just fast forward real fast. I don't want to hear this. Mm -hmm. I want to get to the meat. Mm -hmm. you know, give, me the, give me the real sausage. That's cool. So, um, so yeah, man, I... I thought about this and i'm like this thinking can be used to do something productive not should i do an intro <laughs> mm -hmm. so i was like forget it if you asked me to do an intro i would have actually said no and i would have said something different to everyone and to the audience uh, that will transform to a, a lesson on identity but maybe later we can talk about it as well no no we talk about so it. we are aligned we talk about it now Right now, right? Yes. Yeah, so like if someone say, hey, oh, can you introduce yourself to the audience? And I, I would say, okay. So I'm not going to first tell you who I am in, in the way you, you, you think I would, right? But I would say who I am not, right? So I am not my body. I am not my emotions. I am not my thoughts. I'm not my diplomas. I'm not what I have done, right? I am what is behind all that. Because as you said, we, if I start saying who I am, like in terms of like, what did you study? What did you do for work? We are automatically putting someone on a box and we are negating the magic behind or what you are here to offer to the world. Yeah, so when I'm going to speak, yes, I'm going to speak from personal experience, but also I'm going to speak from another place which is deeper and, and, and vaster and maybe more powerful that will hit people in, in their being, not in their mind. And, and that's an invitation also for everyone here that there are two things when, when you listen to a podcast or you hear someone talk and even during daily life or when you read a book, first curiosity. Like I'm here in this podcast, but I am as curious as you to hear what you're going to offer today. And there I removed the concept of, oh, I know, 
Because the moment you say, I know, that's it. You stopped learning, you stopped growing, you stopped listening for that magic that the other person can, can offer. Because yes, there is one truth, because no one holds all of it. The other point, which is when you should, uh, people should apply, is uh, there is a wise man, uh, his name is Steve Hardison, that I learned this from him. And he say, uh, you, you have to stop judging, right? You have to listen to this podcast about you. So any story I tell, it's not about me. It's about you. Listen about you. Look for the parallels of that in your life. Look where you can get insights. The moment you start judging, who's this guy? Who's this other guy? Oh, da, 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 da. That's it. You're out. And you, you, you're going to enter into a different path. And you're not going to get what really could be helpful for you. Because everyone you, you, you meet can, can add you something. To that equation. But Ayub, in life, there's a lot of noise, mm -hmm. right? So I'll give you a simple example. If you look at the, the feed on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, right? It's an infinite feed, right? It just goes on infinite scroll. And if we are not judging to determine what is valuable and what is not, then how can we prioritize life? Mm -hmm. So you call that judgment... Um, I, I I call deliberately designing my life. So I am judging when I'm looking at a person and I'm saying, again, like asking question, who's this guy? Or I don't like this guy's hair or who he thinks he is. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not getting the magic. Now, when I'm designing my feed for my desired outcome, that's another story. Then, and I agree with you, there is noise. I mean, if, if uh, maybe 20, 30 years ago, uh, Jim Rohn said you are the average of the five, pe five people you hang out with. And today I would say you are the average of the five people you follow on, on social media. Correct? Ah. So I have to deliberately change my life, uh, change my life through deliberately changing my environment and the people I hang out with, even virtually. Interesting. This is very interesting because if this is true, that we are the average of the five people we follow on social media, that means that a bunch of people are the average of some people. 100%. And in, in you, you, um, uh, Benjamin Hardy, Benjamin Hardy, you know, he yeah. say, willpower doesn't work. You can never overcome your environment. And your environment, what is your environment? It's the people you hang out with most likely. Yes. Or the people y you follow. And when it comes to social media, the things go right to the subconscious because mm. there are emotions, there are pictures, things in motions. Um, there is uh, people who really, really follow someone like religiously. Yes. So whatever they say is true. Yes. Right. So and then and and then uh, they end up living a life that is not there, so to speak, but it was implanted in their subconscious through social media. Now, uh, why do you think w when you look around, somehow you, you meet the same similar type of people, right? Uh, maybe part of it because there is that conditioning that is coming from social media, TV and all the inputs. If you, if you want to simplify human being as a, as a system, you know, the input, the transformation and the output. Certainly, whatever the transformation is, if someone is not conscious, mean not consciously sifting through this input, you get the in the output. You gotta be equal to the input. Unless if someone is, uh, again, I'm gonna repeat deliberately, saying, "Okay, this is okay. This is not. What do they mean with this? Why do I? Why? Why actually they are doing this? Why this person is posting this? Right." Uh, at that moment, maybe the output there will be a transformation to the to the input. Otherwise, it's gonna be garbage in, garbage out. Right. So, the way I've designed my life, this deliberate mm -hmm. way, is I'm aware of the weakness of the human mind. It's very feeble-minded because I also know that the guy who taught the Instagram creators how to influence people 
and how to manipulate people through algorithms. His name is B.J. Fogg at Stanford. Mm -hmm. He has a, a lab known as the Persuasion Lab. And I've seen his lectures, I've read his papers, and I've also uh, very closely read the work of people that studied with him, right? So for example, the Instagram um, creator, one of them is uh, Michael Sistrom. And uh, there's another co-founder, I don't know his name, but Michael Sistrom is the main guy who created Instagram. And Michael went to Stanford, which a lot of these tech guys did, mm -hmm. and he studied with BJ Fogg. Mm -hmm. And the way the algorithm is designed, the, the recommended, f uh, for example, on YouTube, right? If we take a shift to YouTube, you get recommended videos on the right side, right? Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact that when I go on YouTube, I wonder what they're recommending to me. Mm -hmm. Like, let me see if there's anything sexy here for me to watch. And mo more, than, more or less, there's nothing, right? It's like, nice try, but no. I, I'm not interested in any of that. And then I also see, if you look at the deliberate designing of life, you have a virtual machine, Instagram, but you also have the physical space, right? And sometimes these get very merged and jumbled up, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, you see this bookshelf behind you, right? Mm -hmm. Full of books. Yeah. So whenever I'm reading something that may be 150 years old, it could be 2,000 years old. Mm -hmm. Like the Seneca books are 2,000 years old. Mm -hmm. So I say, well, Instagram is 20 years old. <laughs> the people on Instagram are either 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. Or I can take knowledge from something that's 2,000 years old. And the fact that it still exists today, it's probably valuable. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to exist 2,000 years from now. But... Things that are coming and going, is it really worth it for me to put my consciousness into that, my attention into that? So my deliberate design is avoidance. Mm -hmm. Because I know that my mind is weak. I'm not some angel, godlike. I'm just a human. Mm -hmm. And I know that the algorithms are smarter than me. Maybe they're not smarter than my soul or my awareness or my potential, you know, my God potential. Higher but self. Yeah, my higher self. But as I am just in everyday life, walking around, doing human things, I would rather just avoid. Mm -hmm. Just knowing what I would say no to. Right. Based on right. what I want to create for my life. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Do you, do you think that is coming basically because you have something you are going after? You know what you want to create with your life. You will know your mission. You know your calling. You, you know your, um, you, you have a purpose. You have a, a thing that you consciously decide to do. And based on that, you start saying no to what doesn't align with it. Precisely. Correct. Yeah. And that's for, for me, when I work with people, when they come, they say, I have time management issues. I was like, no, it's never been a time management. It could be a purpose management. Right. So we start by defining something they want deep and deep in their heart. They want to pursue. And once you know that, my friend, just your life start sorting itself to align with it. Now you talk about these people that are all the same and um, they are just following it, it is uh, um it's been said a uh, long time ago since napoleon held his first whatever book he said 98 percent people don't know what they want if you don't know what that you want if you don't there is a proverb that says if you don't know where you are going you'll end up where you are headed where you are headed of course you'll be controlled then you'll be gone <laughs> Mm. without uh, leaving a trail or without uh, fulfilling in what you deeply desire. You know, in the book, The Five, um, the five Regrets of the Dying, one of them. The, the, the nurse who went mm -hmm. to the, yeah, mm -hmm. the ICU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the biggest regrets, regrets is I haven't done what I desire. You know, I haven't, I, I, I died with the music inside of me 
and also maybe I haven't done things on my bucket list and or have, there are things I haven't said. So this reminds me, okay, the, 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 the five regrets. I know one of them is uh, something about family, didn't spend time with family. Loved one. ones. Loved ones is one of them. Mm -hmm. And I lived my life for other people, not myself. That's one. Yeah, exactly. I remember this book. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's a great, great book. Uh, it's giving me chills already. <laughs> um, another, uh, another book, Ayub, uh, it's on my shelf. It's um, The Way of the Superior Man. Oh, my God. Right? And David Data's... Um, I recently started rereading. You have, you have. Everybody, it's an invitation to third, third time <laughs> rereading, third time. Yeah. And, um, and it's like different aspects of my life. Sometimes I encounter a, an issue, which I used to have, which David Data helped me with. Mm -hmm. And then other things he talked about in the book weren't really my issue. But then some other issue happens mm -hmm. and I go back. And then he helps me with that issue, right? Because there's so many chapters. And uh, more recently, the issue that I was facing is, well, in Tulum, uh, you know, I'm in a very nice relationship, right? I'm very loving relationship. But from my childhood, I have always been made guilty of having, how do you say it? Like being attracted to beautiful women, right? I've always been like, that's a guilt, like it's a shame. Shame on you that you feel libido for hot girls. Mm -hmm. Shame on you. Mm -hmm. And now it's like my mom or my, uh, my dad or my culture or my religion or my country or whatever that was telling me, hey, shame on you. You know, you, you're a bad person. You're evil that you have these sexual thoughts for women, right? And... Now what's happened is, you know, for the first time in my life, I'm in love. Nice. Like I'm like in, in, in deep love with someone. And it's like, I want to spend the rest of my life with her. Mm -hmm. Right. Fantastic. So, I, so it's like, I've never felt anything like this with anybody, not even my, my own family. Mm -hmm. Right. Like someone who I can be fully vulnerable with and she can be fully vulnerable with me. I've never felt that dude. Right. And I'm 41 now. Wow. Right. So I'm majorly grateful right? I, I'm, I'm very humbled by this experience, but that inner self, the lower self, whatever you want to call it, right? It's like whenever I see a beautiful woman, right? David Data teaches us that when you do that, you don't have to suppress your, that instinct. No, you don't have to like, for example, Elliot Hulse, mm -hmm. what he taught me, I went to have lunch with him last year at, uh. In, uh, in Florida. And uh, he taught me that you always should look away. Ah. Always look away. What the Bible says. Look the other way. Now, I will tell you my take on that later on. Yeah. No, I would love. The story is amazing. Yeah, I would love to, to hear it because, because he told me, you know, look. And I can obviously do that. But then Jordan Peterson says, look where you don't want to look the most. Ha. Huh. Right? L the, the abyss. Like the Nietzsche, mm -hmm. if you Face stare, shadow. right, if you share deep into the abyss, the abyss will stare back at you. And so I have these conflicting thoughts, like Jordan Peterson is like, no, do the most difficult thing, do the hardest thing, right? Don't go for the shortcut. Elliot and the Bible are saying, look the other way, right? Mm. And then Jordan just published a video about lust. And um, about um, is lust, adultery, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to watch that. I'm very excited to watch that. He just published it yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so, so David Data says, when you see a beautiful girl and you're in a committed relationship, breathe. You have Deeply. to use her energy as a refresher to channel your energy through your system and not leave your energy stuck in your mind, brain, mind, and the genital area. Otherwise, you will have trapped emotions, which is basically... David Data is a god to me. Right? He's an amazing guy. So, um, Have you seen his YouTube series from 20 years ago? I'm sure I did. I'm sure like I he's, did. He has a bunch of people and he's doing exercises with them. Uh -huh. I've gone through all that maybe more than one time. Good. And the book, uh, it's countless times. I, uh, I go back, as you said, because every time it's a new lesson, every time it's a new layer. But the topic you said, 
man, like how much time we have? Because there are so many things I have to say. We have okay. time. We have time. We're gonna just um, uh, summarize. Uh, so first, I uh, I'm, I'm happy to hear that you say, hey, I am uh, I am on a committed relationship, and I I feel love for my partner, and I feel something that is different from what I feel for my family, which is normal, right? Um, and uh, I think I, I would like to congratulate you because you come a long way because you said I was I was told when I was young that you can't do that. You are not allowed. You feel guilt. And then, you know, like people get conditioned when they are between zero seven and then seven to 15. And then that's become their destiny. And then unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, and fortunately for some people, you, when you grow up in religious environment or or conservative um, conservative families and tribes, so to speak, and I I'm, I was one of them, right? I grew up in the south of Tunisia. For people who don't know, it's in North Africa. So I've, I've read the Quran countless times, and then also after I have read the Bible, then I have all, read other teaching and link that with quantum physics somehow, right? And how life works. Now, when I go back to the, the topic of guilt, right? So e, first you wanna go to the, what's the religion? What's those books? Okay. So um, they varies, but all of them, they were sending a message, which is how you can reach your higher potential and the power of mind. That's, if you look at the book and the essence of the books is that, but what is, was not okay is the misinterpretation the misinterpretation by people. And then when you say people, you said, you said it earlier, the mind is weak. Someone has a will to pleasure and someone has a will to uh, power and someone else has a will to meaning and that's the guy who will help you. So if you look at the guy who, with the will to meaning, he will um, help you through the book because the purpose is enlightenment, how you can reach your highest, uh, your higher, your higher potential, let's say enlightenment. So in, if you're looking from it from that side, certain people will see the abstinence from sex is a path to enlightenment. But certain other people will see that using um, the sexual energy as a path to enlightenment because it happens to feel oneness with the the divine counterpart with our feminine or masculine. And you said, I haven't felt something like this to anyone, which is makes sense because the relationship is, is, is different. The nature of the relationship. Now, if you talk to a guy who want to control you, right? Or a guy who want to have all the pleasure for himself, he will try to stop you because go back now how people were living before. They were living in a tribe. Maybe the, the powerful guy want all the women for himself. Who knows? Yo, you can't, you are not allowed by religion to do that. If you do it, you will go to hell. And then how you control people through fear and propaganda. So you, I created that for you since you are zero, uh, zero years old. You are in your mother womb and you're already listening to these stories. And then you, you end up with having this guilt. However, I want to control you. And if I want to control you, I would definitely try to make you not uh, experience um, this brain or mind orgasm that you can live through sex. Okay. Now, uh, David Data. Because, because I don't want, that person mm -hmm. doesn't want him to see the potential in himself. That person doesn't, okay. So you wanna, when you look at the body energetically, they, the yogis talk about the chakra system, which has this vortex of energies, right? And then they say some people have blocks in certain areas, which is if chakra is blocked. So I think a way, a way to liberate your sacral chakra, which is the one related to uh, sexual desire, but also it's related to creativity, right? Every, every, every chakra has a gift in it, which is aligned with the, the divine. Okay. So, uh, so if you are blocked in that chakra, I mean, I made you blocked in that chakra since you were a kid, I'm saying it's a guilt, it's a da da da. 
in in one way i'm blocking your creativity once you become more creative you become closer to you to your higher self you become more free once you become free i can't control you aha uh-huh. right so the best way to control someone is to keep them their first chakra blocked the best way to control someone is to to block them everywhere oh, right, right, right? right right but this i'm saying that's the way that's it's another an way. way because i when i see those religion the uh, religious books and i see the interpretation i found a contradiction it's not only there like certain religions say music is not allowed right oh the question is like why hmm. because the music will help you enter trance state and you transcend this world and you will if you if you transcend this world you will have your answers and then once you have your answer you don't need me anymore so you have to need me every time so i'm controlling you oh you are not allowed to put pictures in your room right that's also certain religion they say that's true oh why Be- shirk shirk uh huh right? because yeah. pictures they speak to the subconscious mind so you will enter in a creation mode you know and again ah and that's how i control you because you will always stay needing me needing me to help you reach god but the the path that's the thing with religion there is you religion and god they want you to go through that instead of having religion as a help for you to discover and when we say god everybody has a, a, their own their own definition but let's say the god in you you mean your higher your higher self that's so is that your definition ayub what's of, your of definition god. yeah oh. cuz mine has evolved yeah, of course it does yeah it does so my definition of god So you want to refer to uh, Neville Goddard here when he says God is a human imagination because that's how you Neville create. Goddard Neville Goddard I know Oh my god I know this guy I did a podcast with Kyle mm-hmm. last week mm-hmm. and he is the first person who told me about Neville Goddard Mhm Wow He's a fantastic uh, teacher I've studied uh, like a, a bunch of teacher and practiced their things for 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 a while now been uh, five years on this journey so I never got there say God is a human imagination and then what come to me what came to me for me God is so basically God is the source of all there is so basically God is the everything conscious and unconscious at the same time is what you know and what you don't know at the same time it's it's, it's the source of all there is and we are all like a small piece of that so basically you take all the humans together and all the non-humans who knows the other planet right together and then you take all the imagined everything that exists and everything that imagined and everything that we still haven't imagined yet and then you take all that so that's maybe my if i want to say my definition I, sometimes you can't find the right word to say sure, sure. Uh, something like that but you know uh my favorite book of all time is the dao de ching and then they say the dao that is na- named it's not the dao means the god that is named it's not the god so means whatever i'm going to tell you right now is not that <laughs> it's maybe more or maybe less because that is if you want to get the essence of it right uh huh Do you want to go back to Elliot Hart the what he said to you or no Yeah 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 absolutely mm. because, because I told you uh-huh. it was interesting so we um, we so I've known Elliot since 2015 right because when 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 uh, he you know he still has strength camp the gym in Florida and there's different franchises in, in the US but I used to live at the gym and um I made a decision when I was uh you know doing pickup and all that with RSD in Vegas and mm-hmm. picking up girls every day at at the club and learning how to talk to girls all that stuff um I asked my mentor Owen Cook you know RSD Tyler mm-hmm. uh from from the company I asked him basically there's two people who have offered me a position one of them is Ty Lopez uh-huh. Ty and I had an interview with his team and everything at his house uh this is like 2015 and um this is like before he became famous and yeah. all the garage video and all that and uh, the garage video yeah. yeah and then the second uh was elite house and uh and and the discussion we had is what are my goals right and my ultimate goal was health 
Mm -hmm. right? That was it. Because wow, I, I I'd known my testosterone levels were low. You know, it was like an 82 year old uh, testosterone levels. Um, I had my blood test levels checked. You know, I, I had problems with women with like, you know, getting it up mm -hmm. in the bedroom, a lot of anxiety. Um, just, I, I didn't like the way I looked. It was just really, really bad state. If that's after a PhD, right? So mm -hmm. like being on top of my game academically, everyone like wants me to work in their lab, giving me positions at Harvard Medical School and other places. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. None of this. I'm good with this. I need to fix other things. So the decision we came to together is I go and, and work with Elliot Hulse and I live at the gym. I, I'm with him all the time as much as I can. And then when I left, about um, eight months, I stayed there. Then I left, I did other things. And then last year, um, Elliot has offered um, a, a thing where you can have lunch with him uh, for $1,000, mm -hmm. right? It's like a mentorship. Nice. So I'm like, okay, sure, like for sure, 100%. So uh, yeah, so I flew to Florida and we had lunch at uh, in, in you know near his place. And while we were heading to lunch, obviously we see girls and you know and I'm always wondering about Elliot because I had already I'm, I was already in a relationship with Martha. So I was telling Elliot that hey, you know, for the first time in my life, I have this relationship and but I still have that lower mind from before, right? I because with with uh, with the pickup companies and with all the coaching we were taught simply that if you see a girl that's beautiful, you go talk to her. Like, you don't even think, man. You just go. It doesn't matter, like, anything. Because if you wait, then you're going to get insecure. You're going to have this problem, that problem. You can this excuse, that excuse. So that was so ingrained into my soul. Like, it was, like, part of me. It was, like, who I am, right, in 24-7. In so, and all my friends were like that. Everyone around was like that, mm -hmm. right? So that that wiring, right, got shook up when I fell in love. It sh got shook up because now mm -hmm. I'm like, wait, the guilt that I used to feel was a different guilt because mm. it was a guilt of like religion and all that. Now it's like if if I get the the libido by looking at some some random girl, is that, am I cheating? Mm -hmm. Is that like, what is that? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, I don't wanna feel this. Mm -hmm. But then I, I said, well, I have high libido. Nice. Right, so like, maybe this is like a, a, a gift, because like it is a, a, gift. a lot of men don't have this. Of course not. Yeah. They're like taking pills for this, uh -huh. right? So, so, so that conflict I had, and then when I went to see Elliot, he's like, he, he would always say, look, don't give that animal self a chance. So always look the other way. He didn't say anything about breathing or mm -hmm. uh, using it as energy. None of that shit. Look away. Mm -hmm. So your philosophy is similar to data? My philosophy is similar to data, but always you want to add the context to it. Okay. So if you look at religion, like the, the maybe the most strict one in here is Islam. And they say, yeah, just look one time and look away. Okay. Now, would people wonder why you still have in your life the things that you are fighting the most? So if I'm looking at a, a beautiful woman and I'm denying, I'm fighting, I'm fighting myself. I know you have it. You shouldn't look at the what you resist persist, right? So the philosophy of data is you should relax into that. Maybe accept, accept your, your humanness. Maybe thank yourself for this high lipido and channel that energy. And one day, because you, you stopped being charged against that topic, it's not gonna become a problem for you anymore because your love and commitment will always win, right? And David Data also have the other story in this book. He said, you know, like these two friends, they always talk, they say, oh, I, I, I found that girl attractive, I found that girl attractive, and his friend, because he's a man who's gonna check him on his direction, he said, yo, you have to stop talking about this. You either go talk to her or you don't, you, or you stop talking about it, right? 
So I don't think that is a it is a bad thing to have this sort of admiration to someone, but whether you act on it is a different story, right? And if you are a man who understand what is commitment in everything, it's not only in relationships, that should be enough, right? Rather than I will feel guilt for what I see, I will actually feel I acknowledge myself for keeping the commitment and then I'm not charged negatively around that and then once I'm not charged negatively about that I change the meaning I I see you're beautiful but I am I am more in my commitment so it's not gonna be the real problem when it becomes problem when I see it and I deny it and I repress my sexual energy and it becomes in and stay repressed in my mind and my genitals uh, and then I will have problems that's why David said relax and channel uh, channel the energy through deep breathing and through the big circle etc cetera, etc cetera. so right yeah. I want to ask you something else mm-hmm. so a lot of men including myself have been wired for the Hugh Hefner Dan Bilzerian life mm-hmm. right so sleep with as many women as you can uh, you know, the, the girl is a 10 or she's a seven or she's a two, right? You have rankings and we are trained to see girls not for their depth, but for their physical attractiveness, which will obviously go away one day. Like it goes away with everyone. It would. More or less, not go away, but at least in, from... A, right. And for men too. It's not just women. Mm-hmm. So the... The, the, the sort of question I want to ask you is, if someone like me is wired for years into this lifestyle, right? And do this, uh, you have to have a, a number, you know, how many girls you've slept with and, um, oh, how, how, how hot was she, right? Oh, she's not, she was only a six, you should go. You know, there's all this jargon mm. and terminology around, hey, in order for me to be happy or for me to be enlightened or for me to get everything I can out of this life, I need to focus on becoming a Hugh Hefner or Dan Bilzerian where I'm you know, sleeping with an, a different girl every day. And I do that basically for the rest of my life. Because obviously you can't have both. Right, you you can't be committed, and this is the thing I don't understand about open relationships. Like I don't understand it personally, because for me, if there is even a little doubt or a little uncertainty with, hey, is this girl enough? Then, for me, it would be like it. it w- I wouldn't be able to function that way. Mm-hmm. Right, so I come from a maybe a personality or a soul or some kind of like genetics that like I want to give everything to one mm-hmm. right I I want her to have all of me because I want all of her mm-hmm. simple as that and if I'm sharing myself then she won't give all to me it's like it's not it doesn't feel at all possible for me mm-hmm so my question is, Ayub, how does one, especially with the, 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 the way the ages go, right? Like I'm 41 now, mm. right? Some, some kid who is in his, uh, you know, is 18 and he starts this Dan Bilzerian journey, which a lot of them will do because of Instagram. And now he becomes 25, 26. And let's say he falls in love mm-hmm. or he can't fall in love now because he has a certain mind, right? So... I feel very grateful because somehow I found this girl. Like somehow she came into my life. Somehow. Because you done the work, your inner work. You you have asked amazing questions and then the quality of your life depends on the question you ask yourself and the time you spend answering them. Right? So now let's go back to Dan Bilzerian lifestyle. It com- comes comes down to, okay, what is... a what is the, the purpose you want to fulfill? Do you want to become uh, like Dan Balzerian? 
Do you want to become a sex god? Do you want to be known for the guy who sleeps with a thousand women? If that's what you want, maybe that's the path for you. But if that's not what you don't, if that's not actually your deepest desire, maybe you are trying to fit in, right? I wrote one time and uh, I think I said, the fear of missing out is actually a fear of fitting in, in in a group of people or in a type of lifestyle what would be judged cool by my friends and i i work with clients and they say oh my friend is uh, sleeping with this number of girls i'm not and i feel miserable and i'm frustrated la, la, la. right the most important two words you have said in this question and story is for me right so what is good for me right now things can change things could evolve i'm not gonna also enter into what's wrong and what's right but for sure if you are a person who's pursuing women all day your energy will be dissipated and you won't be able to channel it in one area the reason monogamy is a good solution because socially uh, emotionally physically it makes total sense if you will keep always pursuing the type of uh, relationships maybe you will have more complications in your life than than benefits uh, because uh, because of many reasons right and the first one is if you if you're every time with someone you, you you're collecting karma they say you know which is you're collecting emotions as well you become heavy and again your path of becoming you is more of a path of and and becoming means a path of removing the emotions the 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 trapped emotions and the thoughts and the noise you said it on the first of the, the start of the podcast in order to fire your true voice so now if you're pursuing a number of women you you can you will see that consequence on your life unless your purpose was that unless your purpose is that now when you speak of uh, you you said uh, the ranking system right is she a two is she a ten i would simply say one thing so uh, maybe two things okay so the one is beauty is the on the eye of the beholder so maybe try to remove as much as possible what other people think but be open to what's my what's your friend think sometimes about critical points not like uh, oh is she beautiful or not okay the second one is um don't settle for less what you desire if you do, if you really with someone and you said if i have that if i'm like yeah maybe man don't just don't maybe look for why you you're settled with this one that i'm not convinced with her emotionally physically spiritually rather than stay with her because intellectually intellectually right definitely that's important for me but the deep here, yeah you say i saw the most important thing is for me so so that's the thing is so you want to see like is she a 10 for me or is she a 10 comparing to the standard of my group of people or social media or etc she a 10 for me uh, if not yes maybe you should ask different type of questions how how do we know our purpose because here's the thing ooh <laughs> so your 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 uh, home run here because okay Again, I'll ask from my side because it's firsthand experience and uh-huh. that's the best, right? Uh-huh, of course. When I was um, a kid, if I go back into that memory, my purpose was simply to get A's. Mm-hmm. That was it. Simple. Nice. Just get A's. I, was, I didn't care what I was eating. I was drinking Coca-Cola, going to McDonald's. I, didn't even, I was like, this is good food. Like I'm mm-hmm. getting full. I'm getting A's. It's all good. My parents are happy. Right, we go to uh, you know to pray in the prayer hall. All good. Then, when I started pursuing higher academics, you know, getting higher degrees, my goal changed, but it was still the same 
ballpark, right? It was, so during my PhD, it was like, my goal is to win the Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. I want to win the Nobel Prize in medicine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do some amazing groundbreaking work. And that's why I'm doing this PhD. Mm -hmm. That was like the aspiration, you know, like, boom, I'm going to get to this purpose. Mm -hmm. But it was also, I want to, I want to really understand the human mind mm -hmm. through this very small, you know, small set of experiments and a very, very small paradigm. But hopefully, being in this field of neuroscience, I will gain insight into the human mind, which I fucking love mm -hmm. up to today. Like I, I, I read neuroscience books all the time. I love this stuff. But then, after the PhD, the when I had low testosterone and all that, my purpose wasn't to like necessarily in, in a, it wasn't like some goody, oh, I want to be a good health. It wasn't like that. It was, I want to become healthy so I can have the ability to fuck girls well. Mm -hmm. Right? Like I want to be able to satisfy women in the bedroom. That was it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like six pack, like I don't give a fuck about, or, or like muscle. I still don't care about that stuff. Mm -hmm. Muscle, six pack, uh, high, big shoulders. I don't give a fuck, bro. I'm not even impressed by people who have that. Mm -hmm. I don't give a shit. Because I'm more like, I want, I like to adore people who have done like hard work here, right? Like I adore like an Albert Einstein, mm -hmm. right? Or an Elon Musk in, in today's world. Right, I'm like, damn, this is unbelievable brain this guy has. Yeah. Right. So this is like my vibe. So my purpose massaged. Right. It it was like like a snake traveling everywhere, and then when when the purpose was become Dan Bilzerian, literally that was my purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it was like a challenge. It was like the hardest thing for me in the world right now is to talk to a hot girl and get her in bed. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest thing. Because I'm really good intellectually, spiritually, like I got it all under control. I don't give a fuck about all that. And, and it's such an interesting thing because my email address <laughs> is bucket sixth at Gmail, mm -hmm. my personal email address. And I named that because I defined six buckets in my life and the sixth bucket was empty. Uh-huh. So I said bucket sixth because that's the bucket. That's my purpose in life. So I even had my email address like that, mm -hmm. right? Because I wanted to remind myself, buddy, don't forget about this bucket. Nice. Fill this bucket up. And then when I went into the field of you know, testosterone and men's health and supplements and uh, uh, looking at all the different hormones and fixing my own health, one day I was like, I'm good. I doubled my testosterone. It's mm. it's 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 high enough, mm -hmm. and 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 now I'm good. The bedroom stuff is great. Health is good. Body is good. Okay, now what? <laughs> now what? Now what? Right? Like okay. So the 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 purpose is massaging little bit, little bit, right? And now now I'm in love. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like I have a beautiful life, mm -hmm. like the most beautiful life ever. And now my purpose is to this, mm -hmm. play, mm -hmm. play in conversation nice. and, and, and play and, and be free in the world mm -hmm. and, and do that so other people see you free and then they become free. Nice. Right? But how do I know if any of this is my purpose? Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, that, because there are so much misinformation in the world around this specific topic. Passion, purpose, live your passion, da da da. So I'm gonna ask you a question. Now, what you're doing right now, hey, do you see yourself keeping growing with this for a, a long period of time? More than anything else. You see, right? So it became like a mission, it became like you connected to a calling, you became to, as the law of Dharma says, like everyone is born with something. The law of Dharma is coming from the Indian Sanskrit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. But before you tell me the, this, this, uh, ask me more questions. I want to add one more thing. Yeah, please, just one more yeah. parameter into the equation. Yeah, yeah, please. So, as I was building Afro D, mm -hmm. right, and we're still building. We're five years in. You know, still got a long way to go. Mm -hmm. Building the business 
right? It was a way to get to those goals, right? Because very early on, I had this in mind. I said, look, my testosterone is low. Okay, fair enough. I, I still remember I was in Vegas and uh, a Todd from RSD, he was living uh, on the top floor and uh, his roommate was uh, my first business partner, Yuri. And um, uh, Yuri and I kind of split a, a little a little bit after, had some, some business problems, so we split. But I still remember the day Doc Testosterone started. You know, Doc Testosterone was my name before. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, now it's like Doc Farhan, whatever. Mm -hmm. My name used to be Doc Testosterone on social media. So, Everyone still knows me like that. Mm -hmm. So many people know me like that. So when I was uh, in Vegas, uh, living at a hotel, I went to the top floor to meet Yuri, and we had a discussion. And Yuri goes, uh, you know, we had you know, we did like a, the testosterone test. Well, you know, we're going to go get a testosterone test. Um, there was, um, uh, you know, we were facing some health problems, both of us. Um, and, and I knew that my health wasn't good. Like, you know, I didn't feel good. And, and, and Yuri goes, you should become a dick doctor. Mm -hmm. you, should, you should become a dick doctor, Farhan. And I'm like, that moment, Ayub, I made the decision. It was so aligned. Because I was like, wait, my dick doesn't even work. Mm. So if I became a dick doctor, guess what? I have now burned all the ships and I have no other alternative than to fix my dick mm -hmm. because now I'm a dick doctor. Mm. I have to, mm -hmm. right? So I made a decision that now consciously, you know, stoicism, right? Obstacle is the way. The obstacle right? is the way. Mm -hmm. So I said, and I had read this book very at that time when it first came out. So I'd read, I was like, wait, this is my obstacle. If I go all in, I have no other way but to succeed. Because if I don't succeed, I will not have money. I mm -hmm. won't have food. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go to my parents. Like, I'm just going to be homeless. This is it. Mm -hmm. Right? So it was like a, my, my purpose was defined by an obstacle. But then, as I was building AfroD, I came to a realization that building a business is not my purpose. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, marketing, copywriting, funnels, blah, blah, blah. Nah. And maybe because I have a creative nature, maybe it's just like I like to create lots of different things and I have a lot of different things on my mind. But that is a part of this equation too because I know for a fact that my deepest desire is not like some product that's like some herbs. No, mm -hmm. no, not at all. And this is the reason why, you know, I, I, I basically took a step back and I said, look, this is more aligned mm -hmm. with my purpose. Mm -hmm. Giving a message to the world and being vulnerable and truthful and talk about things that not, are not easy. Mm. Like these podcasts are not easy for me, man. Because I go deep into my history mm. and that causes me a lot of trauma because I'm not that guy anymore. Mm -hmm. But I am also that guy. Mm -hmm. I cannot escape that guy. So I'm trying to embrace that guy. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to add this part in the equation so you can Yeah, there is help. a lot to uh, actually uh, to show here in maybe the path of discovering a mission or connecting to a calling. So if we go back to the first question I asked you, I said, Farhan, do you see yourself now keeping growing on this thing? Yes. Keeping serving people through this and what could unfold of it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now the other question, do you see yourself being who you are today without leaving all these experiences? Would you serve this mission today the same way if you didn't live all the experiences no. you have you have you have said before? Since you, the start, you said I, I get A's, then I eat McDonald's. No way, no way, right? So, and here there are fundamentals when I help people discover a life direction, and I would also tell you why I say that not 
your purpose. So you will continue living lesser purposes until one day you connect to a higher one that you will say, this is it. Right now we'll take this as a mission. That's why I try to use different wording. So for people to make distinction, passion, purpose, mission, life direction. Okay. Now, when you met Yuri and he said, oh, you should become a D doctor. That's omens. Life will keep showing you things. If you become vigilant, omens, uh, signs and symbols. In, in, in my philosophy of helping people, the, the first day someone starts working with me, I said, okay, since today you have to start recording everything. They will say, why? I'll be like, it will make sense at the end. Because purpose is the journey of connecting the dots. But purpose is not a specific point in, that, in time you have to reach. That's a goal. And that's why you said earlier, when I connected to a higher purpose, to a mission, all these goals have been completed. But a purpose will never end or a lesser purpose will end, a higher one will keep unfolding. And then it's okay to, in between them, you may enter this zone of emptiness. It's your time to connect to the next step, right? And then right now, as you're taking this as a mission, this will keep unfolding, will keep growing. And you, you, it might, at one day, it might not make sense, but then it's time for a, for a next one. So what most important is to keep that, uh, that expansion. And then that's why, like, when, when someone comes and go on social media, sometimes I receive email from, like, really high caliber influencer in terms of followers. Come here, discover your passion, find your purpose. And I wrote an article one time. I said that I have a problem with the word, with the phrase, find your purpose. First, Mark Manson said that, uh, yeah, yeah. It's like find your purpose. It's like one day you're gonna find your purpose under a rock, you know, and or you're sitting on the couch and bam. No. Victor Franklin, the father of meaning, say said um purpose is a freely chosen task. Right? So you have to decide. It's not find. Now, I have also problem with your purpose. I say, find a purpose. I, you live different purposes. I live different purposes. But all of them have led us to this path to have this conversation today. Me and you will never be able to have this conversation if we haven't lived through these purposes. And one of them could have been uh, going through a, a problem, the obstacle, the way you said. It's going through a challenge, solving a challenge. Then you want to see how you can offer that to the world. After that, how you can share that as an experience to the world. Then you can see how to monetize, which is also I'm okay with it. So now, if we take the, the notion of passion, purpose, and mission, or a life calling, as I said, the law of Dharma said, everyone in this world has something unique about them that they should find, and they should help expand, because... A calling or a mission, it's more to it's more like a continuation to the to the evol evolution of the universe. Because again, I said we should go back to definition. So for me, passion is something you are in inclined to, but also something you are ready to sacrifice your time to do it. And you said before, I wasn't passionate about building a business. I was passionate about the other side of it. I have more vision. I have more creativity. Right. So what's my inclination? So in my in and to, for me, I, I when someone thinking about passion, I always try to locate it around the two questions. Um, what and how? Right. What am I doing and how am I feeling when I'm doing it? Right. So if we are two different person, if you want to simplify and we use cars, what car I want to drive? I want to drive a Jeep. You want to drive a, a BMW. Now, how I feel when when I drive it and how I drive it will be different. Me and you will never be the same driving a car. Same thing. What do, what do I feel more inclined to my passion? Then how I do it has to be, I have to add this element of uniqueness. So now my purpose is like why I'm doing it. And then with my mission to whom I am given this, but I have to take all the what's 
all the hows, all the whos, and I put them together in a something that I can offer to the world. Now, from a more spiritual definition of purpose, now we have to look on like how all this all started. It started with the Big Bang. Bam! There was nothing. When there was source, and source wanted to experience itself. And then source is experiencing itself through, through this creation. And we are part of that creation. So this is source and this is us, right? So source experiences itself through us. So the purpose of source is expansion. So for me, in order for me to fulfill my calling, I have to keep expanding, but I have to keep experiencing myself through reaching my highest unique form of self-expression so I can fulfill the purpose of this universe, which is to continue the expansion. Now, how I do it, that's another question too. I have to do it with joy because you never see nature struggling. The sun comes and it's fine and then gone. So, um, so that's, uh, that's how maybe I can um, summarize what you said right now. Then I, I want to go back to the topic of symbols and, 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 and uh, omens, right? So as I said, like every time I work with someone, I say, start recording whatever you see, but don't judge. Writing it down. Yeah. Write it down, make a note, everything daily preferably what people say about you what 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 you have seen today what you have seen in the in the street and with family etc and keep keep notes of that because one day it will connect one day you will connect the dots of this story and then it will give you your next direction of of the uh, of the, for the next three years or next five years who knows but that's part of the equation and then the, the, the next step is you want to see what's unique about you. Okay. Right. What's, what's unique about you? Because remember, we say source has created us in, in different ways because it's part of, uh, it's, it's, an, it's an experience of ex experiencing yourself, you know? So it has to be different. What's unique about you usually doesn't come easy for people because it's so easy. So if right now I ask you and anyone watching this to take 30 seconds and think about their siblings or their close friends. Oh, put one person in your mind and try to remember what they are good at or what they, what they make them unique for you or what they add to the, your life. If the answer is easy. Yeah. Why? Because someone else. Usually when it comes to me, to the person who's looking for a new life direction, it doesn't come easy because they think it's, it's easy for them. That's exactly what you should be offering to people, right? We are having this conversation. We are not having any problem, right? Right. Right. Because it comes easy to us because of what's unique about us, but also all the purposes we have lived. Maybe five years ago, I can't hold a conversation in English. Mm. I needed to leave a purpose to help me with my English, right? And uh, I needed to also... Uh, to live some struggle with life direction. So I decided that I'm gonna study the topic of life direction. And I spent five years studying, et cetera, et cetera. And then I created the simple model. I call it APB, right? And it's been also helpful in uh, putting a framework to this. So energy purpose blocks, right? EPB. So purpose, you need destination. If you don't have a destination, you'll end up in, in the middle of nowhere. So by destination, do you mean a vision, like a, a, a imagined vision of how you want to see the world? No, it's a, it's a desired future self. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and you must. Concretely. Uh-huh. Not to how you, how you, be selfish. You know, the world will function with you, with you or with not. As sincerely, if I disappear today, Farhan, right? Some people will be upset, but the earth is spinning. If the earth disappeared tomorrow, things will be fine as well, right? That's also one of the pr principles of um, why I'm not okay with find your purpose. Man, don't think you're too important. <laughs> 
basically think the opposite. Become no one, so you will become someone if you remove this noise. Oh, I'm so important because when when you start in a new life direction, the the beginning always humbling. It's so humble. It's not like you you'll be creating the next Tesla tomorrow, right? Something small, but you need to follow the steps. Okay. Well, one thing about um, so one thing you said very very interesting is that it should be it should come easy. It should come easy, like flow. Exactly. It's like happening, right? So, for instance, let's say uh, we are in elementary school, mm-hmm. first grade. You get a math problem. It's hard. A person who s- maybe misinterprets this sentence would be like, well, this math is not easy for me. So I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Forget about it. I won't do my homework today. Which is, I'm not saying this is right or wrong. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to concretely understand where what you have in your mind. Mm-hmm. So there's no misinterpretation, right? So for example, when I decided to start Afro-D, right? I was certain that I'm going to do this. There was no like, should I do it? Like it was not, when I was doing my PhD, there was no question. Like I'm doing this, this is it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people tell me like, man, PhD, it must be really hard. I'm like, it wasn't, mm-hmm. it wasn't hard at all. I mean, maybe it's hard for some people. For me, it wasn't hard. It was kind of easy, mm-hmm. right? There's way harder things than that. So, but, but, there are certain things that feel hard. Like, for example, ice bath, right? Mm. A jungle gym. Um, I've been doing ice baths for years, but Martha, she never did it in her life. Mm-hmm. First time she got in there, man, it was hard it for is, her. Yeah. Right Today, Catherine, also from Playa, she, she, her and Bal came yesterday for the podcast. And it was Catherine's first time today. She did it. It was hard, right? Certain things in life are hard, Right it's not necessarily going to flow. So how do we distinguish doing things that are good for us, but they're hard, versus flow? Mm. Yeah. So you, um, Gay Hendrick talks about in the book, The Big Leap, he talks about the four zone of functions. Maybe we should start with there. Yeah, yeah. Right? So there are four zone of functions. One is the zone of incompetence. Things you know you're not good at and you don't want them. You don't want to be good at them. Then there is the zone of competence. Is things you know you're good at, you study it, uh, you 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 have experience in, you decided to make them like an ice bath, right? You become good at them. But also you know there are other people who can do that, right? If you work a little bit harder and you chose to, it becomes your zone of excellence. You become one of the maybe 2%, 10% in the world who does that, right? And you'll be paid higher for it, right? And then the the fourth zone was the, uh, was it the zone of genius, he said, right? He said, that's where your calling or mission would, would, would be. It's, it's something that is innate to you. You have a natural inclination to do you discover you you are good at it, it comes naturally easy to you, and you reach the zone of a flow when you're doing it. I mean, times and sp- time and space disappear. Oh. And that's flow, and you enter the zone, what I call of creative energy, where you become, it's not only I'm gonna do an ice bath, you become with a creative way of doing an ice bath that is easier to you. It didn't come to someone else, right? And then oh. you become creative with ice bath. So I, you took this example, so I'm using it. So someone who decided to do ice bath becomes their zone of competence, something they're good at, but there are so many who are doing it. And someone who decided to study with Wim Hof, the, the ice the ice man, or so he will become like an excellent, maybe ice bath facilitator, right? But someone who would do all of these and then he comes with, a creative way or a, a different way or mm. a unique way to do ice bath, it will become that's their zone of genius. And that's what maybe they should pursue for the next period of time. 
Very, this is a very good point because the way, the way I see it is purpose. Yes, there's an innate point of view. I, I get you. Mm -hmm. It's innate. Like for instance, when I was a kid, I, I asked my mom this question all the time. I'm like, Hey, mm -hmm. when I was a kid, was there something unique? Like what the hell was I doing as a kid? I don't remember Definitely, when I was yeah. two years old, three years old, what the hell I was, mm -hmm. I was doing. So one thing she always says is that when guests came over to our house, you didn't want them to leave. Mm -hmm. You hid their shoes. Nice. They wouldn't be able to leave. You mm -hmm. put a, put the f shoes in the closet under some uh, clothes or in the fridge. Sometimes you, you just put it somewhere in the house because mm -hmm. you loved guests, mm -hmm. right? Another uh, story she tells me is like, you would be playing on your own. You didn't need any of us. You just played by yourself. And uh, you didn't even, you weren't even scared when you were by yourself. Mm -hmm. You would like literally walk miles with people without us. Wow. And we would be worried about you. Like, where the hell did Farhan go? Mm -hmm. But you had no worry, right? So I take these, maybe something innate in mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. where maybe there's an independence Maybe there's no need for perhaps community or no need for uh, uh, um, attachment to things, right? And then I see, okay, if I love guests, maybe I just love the energy of people. Mm -hmm. And I love to discover things with physical, like a podcast, mm -hmm. literally, right? So I, so I take these innate things, but Ayub, that is one part of the equation. The other part is we have to be in an environment which can turn on the feeling of genius, right? Like, for example, this guy, uh, Tiger Woods, right? Best golfer ever. His dad, like, gave him a golf class mm -hmm. when he was four, mm -hmm. right? And now best golfer in the world. So you could say, oh, Tiger Woods is a golf genius. But... It's possible that it's not that he's a golf genius. He's just a genius. So if it, I'm going to ask you a question, if you know, it's going to be good. Do you know if he has brothers or siblings? I don't know. You see, because if he has, his dad would have gave to all of them a class. Why one of them become a genius? <laughs> because he has the innate, but also he nurtured it. He like, you will find your, your, your thing. But you have to nurture it, man. For in order for you to today have this podcast, mm. Barhan, you had forty-one years in the making. You know, you've been nurturing this thing, walking by myself outside. You've traveled the world, learned from the best, encountering the best in the world, and then you built a successful business. You built a community on top of it, and now it's something else coming. So there was that innate thing, but you took a journey and you nurtured that. You have spent countless hours and countless money in nurturing that thing. That's what I see. Okay. Right. So if someone who doesn't have any idea, mm. one thing you said, they write down, they have a journal. They write down what they see, what they notice. Mm -hmm. And then what? And then... Yeah, you want to also um, ask yourself amazing questions, the deeper questions, right? Uh, is this how I, is this how I, how, how I want to be celebrated in my 80th birthday, right? Uh. And where do I want to be, where, where do I want to celebrate that? Okay. On my deathbed, how I would, do, how I would, how I would say I would have lived my life, not like how I actually lived it. Remember the regrets that we said before, people have a regret for living their lives in a different way than they wanted. And then they wake up and then they say, oh my God, I wish I did something different. So on my deathbed, how I, how I would have lived my life, right? So, so basically it's a combination of what is what I'm naturally inclined to, what is my unique skills? What is my skills gap that I need to nurture? And how, the, who, how do I want to really 
contribute to this exploration? How do I want to express myself in my highest form? What is my natural way of saying things? But you, you have to sift and sort, okay? It's not like an easy task. That's why I told you I have the, the topic, in the, the model framework, energy, purpose, and blocks. Maybe I should say, say something about it. Yes. So energy, purpose, block, it's, a, it's a actually a funny story how this came to me. So I, I was in a camping trip in uh, Algonquin Park in Toronto. And then it was 6 a.m. And I woke up, it was kind of in a meditation. And, and there was some fog with the droplets of water coming, you know, in the, in the woods. And at a certain moment, I swear, like, it seems with every drop in my head, I get an idea. And this model it kind of got shown to me. I ran to the car and I put my journal. My journal is with me in the camping camp. That's what I'm saying. People should journal. So I go there and I, I throw these circles, energy, purpose, blocks. I'm like, yeah, this is how you do it. So what I'm saying, so energy, purpose, blocks, EPB. So purpose, you have to choose a destination. And we can say why people should do this later. It's very important. So because first, if you don't have a destination, you will end up in the middle of nowhere. Usually not where you want, right? Uh, Murphy's law. <laughs> Usually you're not where you want. Then if you. Uh, How concrete again, I want to know. Mm. So for example, Joe Rogan, mm -hmm. his, when, whenever someone asks him his purpose or his five-year plan or goal, he simply says, I want to get better at podcasting. I want to get better at commentating UFC. And I want to get better at stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. That's it. I want to be better. Mm -hmm. Is that enough? But he, he decided what? But if you ask Joe Rogan more questions, he will he have to choose one of them. Because why? I'll tell you. So... Mm. I, I distinguish, I say, I would say, let's say, let's take mission. Joe Rogan mission is to become better at podcasting. You see what he's doing because his action can tell and his attention, time and where he invests his time and money can tell you. 100%. So that also people should know that. Where do you invest your time and where do you invest your money? That could mm. be simple as that, right? Because right. you won't have interest anyway. Attention is a very high currency. So where is your attention is? But that's the mission. Joe Rogan is ready to invest his time and, and, and money to, to become better at that, to share his message because man, that guy has a gift for that, but also he has years of experience and work and um, I'm not here to define Joe Rogan. You know? So now the topic of passion. I created two types of passion, I say. I call it lifestyle passion and purpose passion. So, and those are fed into the framework EPB, energy, purpose. So, a lifestyle passion is something you know you like, it adds energy to your life, it helps you move forward. It helps you rejuvenate, for example. And you can have many of them. It's okay. You can have dancing. You can have martial art. You can have uh, walking. You can have cycling. Everything. And that's where this is what helps people actually make a decision. Because I say, oh, I like too many things. How do I know this is the one? That's why I created the other term, which I call it a passion purpose or a purpose passion, a PP. So why? This is one thing you know you like, you are inclined to, but you are ready to spend your time and attention and the resources to become better at it. And it is one thing. It's, it's what? And it is one thing. Ah. So you will have many, many, many lifestyle passion. Ah but you will have one purpose passion, at least for the next period. And that one purpose passion will become your mission if you create what we need to do to make it a mission. Now, the lifestyle passion, you will add them to the bucket energy of your life, which is, you, because if you have a purpose, you have to design the lifestyle that make you live that. And that's why I say, if you have a destination, if you don't have the energy, 
to go there you're not gonna fill, you, you're gonna hit the plateau or you're not or you're not gonna go there if you have too much energy which is entropy also you will you, you won't be channeled right mm. you won't have this uh, cre- you won't create you will just dissipate energy so you want to find the right of style that's what I got, energy now if you have energy and purpose mean you have the great lifestyle to tell Philip and you have a destination during the road you may reach a blocks and that's where blocks comes right blocks are financial emotional spiritual and skills gap so let's say today I, I, I decide to become the best podcaster let's say we, we use that example I have the energy I have the lifestyle that allow it I have a purpose but what is my but I can't do it so what are my blocks so first I may have beliefs that are limiting me you can't become a podcaster subconsciously so I I, I might hit a plateau I may have um, I may have financial blocks I don't have the money to buy equipment right I may have relationship blocks and I don't have enough people I can reach out to right I may have uh, emotional blocks that's uh, basically limiting beliefs mostly and I might start the journey and I hit again a plateau and I have to discover what is stopping me here is it energy is it blocks so it could be spiritual emotional physical and um, it could be a lifestyle design to fulfill that that purpose okay and then this framework I always play with when I work with someone sometimes I don't need to tell them I'm, I created this model but I direct my questions around is this per- person have a problem with the life direction is this person have a problem with energy which means they have things that drains them of energy and they don't have enough things that keep them going or this person has a block somewhere and usually people think if you don't know something today it doesn't mean you can't be it in the future I and the reason the, the main reason for procrastination is it never been like a how to knowing how to that's a skills gap that's a block go study go learn go hire consultant go hire coach go read the thousand book five books one book I don't whatever the solution is you will want you will do it but the reason for procrastination is the want to do you want to and if you choose uh emission that is emotionally compelling for you you will want to do it reminds me of the Nietzsche saying uh, a man who has a strong enough why will always figure out the how will we'll always figure out the how hmm. right how does how does someone know okay we can feel stuff sure we have a feeling inside like okay I feel this is my calling mm. life direction purpose right and Are there perhaps yes or no questions or like a self audit where someone can say, "You know what? I'm going to ask myself these questions, mm. and if they check, then I'm good." Mm. Or forget about all the questions. If you think this is your purpose and you deeply think that, mm. not like today you think it, but tomorrow you're uncertain and then you're no, no, you're. You're thinking like this is your like for the last 10 years this has been mm. how does someone know and does it matter because you know the atheists and other nihilists would say purpose is bullshit right mm-hmm. like for example uh, Robert Sapolsky's one of my favorite authors in neuroscience I got all of his books on the shelf he would basically laugh at you he'd laugh at me yeah he'd be like you A purpose bro uh you're you don't even have free will what purpose are you talking about right? uh-huh. like you know you're you're on earth you are literally uh, uh governed by your genetics by evolution by your culture by your you know your surroundings and that's it you're a puppet mm-hmm. so what purpose what are you talking about what higher inner you know deep inner purpose david data mm-hmm. it's, it's it's like a bs type thing you're just kidding yourself yeah but then 
how do we navigate this, right? Especially people who are more inclined towards nihilism, like life doesn't have meaning. Uh -huh. Like, if you got someone like a nihilist, <laughs> yeah, 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 how do you deal with that? Because yeah. they have a very strong belief in this. I agree with them because, because I agree with them. That's why I was like, I'm not okay with find your purpose. It's like not important. Life doesn't have a purpose other than expansion, but life has a purpose and the purpose of life is what you assign to it. I mean, purpose is a freely chosen task. The more important question to ask is, should you choose something to go after or not? Right? Should you, and then I may argue why you should. Okay, so yes, life is purposeless. Don't think you are too important in, the, in that sense, but it depends what you assign to it. Okay, so the more important question to ask is, should you choose something to go after? To be or not to be. Yeah, <laughs> to be or not to be, correct. So, the, um, uh, sorry, what's his name? Uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Okay, let's, let's start there. He say, the human being is always living in the past. You think whatever 60,000 thoughts a day, 90% of them are in the past. You are keeping, you are keeping your, uh, your life following old patterns. And he say, the only way for you to break free from that is to look for a future vision and start becoming it now, right? So that's one argument is if you want really to break free from the past and the past has, has memory, has drama, it has, a uh, it has, um, uh, negative thoughts, negative beliefs, it has also sickness. Okay. So if in order for me to break free from that, I have to create a new vision means I have to choose consciously who I want, what I want to do, what I want to be. Okay. Now in the basic human needs in, in the Maslow hierarchy of needs, the, the, the top one is self-actualization, which means reaching one's fullest potential. Otherwise I will feel, I will feel useless. And now there is experience, there is data as well. People who, who were dying, they would, I wish I have done something different in my life. Do you want to be that person? Right? That's for example, one question to ask no. to someone, right? I don't think anybody does. Yeah. Because you said, what's the list of questions? That's one of them. Right? So the, the, ba the, the human hierarchy of needs, uh, as Maslow put it, the top is the top is the self-actualization, but the, the bottom is the the physical needs. But today, in today's nature, people have food, people have uh, shelter, or they have some security. So reaching a higher potential, a higher potential, meaning deciding a, a life direction that is aligned with your skills, unique ability, and who you are, will make you have a better self-esteem going top to bottom now. Will make you have a better self-esteem you make you have a better self of belong, a uh, better sense of belonging. You make you feel more secure, and you make you even enjoy the life you have uh, in your hands. Because I don't know, me and you, we have traveled uh, a couple of places. We have lived in uh, nice apartments. Uh, you have have things around you that is nice, nature, etc. But would you enjoy? Uh, uh, because if if you don't have all this, you will ha you will be sitting by yourself in a room, correct? So, would you enjoy the place you live in, the people you are around, or even the food you you eat? If you are purposeless, no, no, right. So, for me, in my equation of fulfillment, you need someone to live with and something to live for, and you need to take care of yourself. Okay, so um, that's the second argument for why you should choose like a, like a direction, right? The, the third argument uh, would be around um, the time management. You, you know, if you don't have a clear direction, if you don't know where you're going, you, 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 you will have a, a 
attention deficit disorder you don't know where you should focus your energies and you, you'll be like everywhere instead of knowing okay is this thing for is this thing is aligned with my what i want to achieve for the next five years or for the next forever for life yes or no and then it helps me organize my my time but also now if i don't have i have a lot of free time i don't have a point of focus and as uh, joe dispanza said you, you you will be keeping living in the past right so and every time someone comes to me and i say he say i have negative thoughts maybe i have i have i feel a little bit depressed before going to that uh i say show me your schedule <laughs> because if you have so much empty time you 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 might be a person who default to negative thinking rather than default into creativity so and creativity is the natural default actually state of mind and i have just read this research uh, lately that last week and that's where should people should should people uh, be and but you need a kind of channel you need a canva you need a mm. canva for 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 your creativity to to flourish and uh, choosing a direction would be mm, a better idea the father of meaning victor frankl he said that um uh, um 89% of people when he ran the research 89 89% of people answered that i need something to live for rather than um someone to live with or make money or other reasons 89% of people and according to his uh, science of lo- logotherapy people have a will to meaning means as opposed to will to power or will to pleasure because that's But what you're going to do with your free time? So, will to meaning, if you don't have that, you will basically experience this existential vacuum. The the feeling that people in, in our society today feel. They have the best jobs and they have the, the best partners. They have the best families. They have every every need is met, but they feel that void, Right? I would rather look on how I would solve that problem rather than say oh life has no purpose. Now it, it, it's it's crazy because you have the 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 latest study from Gallup they say more than 60% are disengaged at work. Their study in 2017 85% of people don't want their, their jobs. The same thing there is a study that said in men early mortality is correlated with retirement okay right so okay. look at this look at, look at this paradox for me it's a problem for me it's that's why i do what i do today you have a person saying like 85% of people don't like their jobs 4 billion like you know uh, we have 4 billion workforce that's 1 billion so you have 1 billion person hating their job every day leaving that existential vacuum and then when they retire they die early what kind of life is that right so i would rather find the balance in my life while i'm doing my job and that's the model i offer i offer to people i say okay change the meaning around your job find what you really truly truly desire to do on the side for example someone else can do podcasting on the side and then build that as a way of living so when you retire you don't enter a deeper crisis of existential vacuum a bigger existential vacuum and can make us to early mortality and then mm-hmm. if you look at the study done by the book guy i don't agree with their model but i agree with um what they have discovered and what they call the blue zones the ah. the five regions where people live the most why they have this joie de vivre uh, a reason of being uh, why they're happier because they have a community someone to live for because they they have um a uh, little bit of exercise and diet and diet and because they have something to live for someone to live with and something to live for a small task that decide they they are inclined to do forever 
for certain reason those are the the people who live the most right so to choose a direction to choose something to live for it will solve the issue of this engagement at work and also it will solve the issue of this crisis after retirement and all of us have seen our dads when they got their first time uh, first time retirement at home you, you may recall these stories you know anybody can listen and uh, who's listening who would have this story and to me frankly this is the biggest waste of brain power you have uh, people are disengaged at work and then they end up work and they enter into crisis oh and why retired people they go to doctor more than other people <laughs> Because they have free time, they have nothing to do, so they have to create something. So they create sickness. And then they go get busy with it. So that's my argument for the nihilist. <laughs> yeah. Are you what is your purpose and how has that changed? Yeah, it it's it changed over the years, as you said. So same thing. Um okay. So first I will have to say this one thing. There was, okay, you go to sleep at night. You have a good sleep or bad sleep, but usually you only know that you are sleeping only when you wake up in the morning. The <laughs> same thing with uh, how we live our lives. Maybe I was walking, uh, doing my life asleep. As, as, as I have a similar path, maybe at the start, my, my goal was to be number one in the class because that's what my dad wanted to always uh wanted that's always to do and uh, it was right because he said to us when we were young he said yo you're your only passport to leave this to leave from this environment i grew up in very poor neighborhood environment in south of tunisia so your only passport is vacation so we done that so again my purpose was to get the best and that study studied studied at the top um, engineer school in the country lived to canada when i went to canada to do my second masters i i, I discovered other things you know uh, from there moved to toronto worked on a hedge fund and and there comes the the shock i i, I knew that i was asleep the morning came so it was a time because i worked in a startup like i thought i have made it man i was like a startup hedge fund but when I, after four years, I discovered that I, the, the founders, there were the founders and me, right? Old guys, a young guy fresh from the school, uh, university. And then I thought that I made it. Hedge fund, bro, like, but they, I noticed that the energy has shifted. They, they don't want to basically that I be rewarded with the amount of contribution I have done because the business grow from 29 million under management to 400 leverage that six times that's 2 billion of assets. So they say you're young. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so I got a shock from that identity crisis. Uh, um, so did they just let you go? I, I left. Oh, you left. Yeah. Cause they weren't gonna give you what you deserve. Mm -hmm. They like a backstep. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I remember like, like this, my, my last, meeting with the CEO, I was like, yo, a paycheck is a paycheck, but a human being is a human being. But then I went for the journey of one year, right? Investing only on, on myself, my self-development. And I lived some deep spiritual experiences that showed me another path, right? I was always left brain. Now I have this right brain that was initiated with dancing first, but then they come to the, I discovered I have this thing, which is playing with words or this kind of wisdom I had inside. And then I remembered when I was a kid, how all my friends, they come and they ask me for things and I'm answering. From where I'm answering them? The question is why they came to me to answer them. And then that time life showed me other, other signs. I had to connect them, right? So big, I said, okay, if I reach this place, if I reach this place and then I, I, I wasn't feeling fulfilled. Because that was my dream job, man. being at the hedge fund, the quant at the hedge fund. And then I've done it. And hey, like, I, I didn't do it like 
born in Toronto. No, I took a journey of three, four cities, uh, uh, like a plan. You know what I mean? So it was a journey, but yet still not fulfilled. So I was like, so I wanted to ask more. And I would say I was shown through this path of self-discovery and the path of inner work and also being involved with the out, outer work, outer world. That my my purpose was to, I want to organize the science and the spiritual ph philosophy of purpose. And then I start studying that. And by me studying that, and I'm still on my path, by, by me studying that, I, I start getting those breakthroughs and those models that they, I, I create for myself. And uh, um, since then, I, I, I started coaching practice as well. And then it's, by, it's part of my journey, part, part, part of my purpose as well. Because I have this, this lady one time, she said, I'm going places and I'm taking people with me. And again, for me, that and fulfillment is a problem. I told you, people live and fulfill that work, then they have early retirement, then they die. People have, uh, they live lives and they regret. For me, that's a problem I want to solve, and that's part of my mission. Now, how I do it is changing over the years. This is because just to answer your question. Uh, well, we met four, four, or four years ago. Uh, I'm not the same. I'm sure you're not the same. You live experiences who... Because we are people who look to grow every day, right? I'm, I'm always ashamed if I'm the same in three months, I tell you this. And then uh, my purpose with my mission is, uh, is growing because purpose is a, is a living, breathing organism. And it shouldn't be a finite goal. It should be an unfinite game that you choose to experience and you, you keep you keep you keep fulfilling here i want to mention paulo quilho for example right because people also they, this this my interpretation of the book the alchemist i find it's fantastic <laughs> uh, so paulo quilho he has a shepherd so he has a group of sheep sheep and he was in a journey of discovering his uh, personal legend. And then at the end, he discovered it was the journey, right? But during his journey, every day he asked himself, should I go to the familiar or should I continue my journey? If I go to the familiar, I know everything. But what is the familiar? It was a group of sheep means people who follow I mean people who are still asleep they didn't they don't know they are asleep because they are not in the morning yet so that's the the, the clever analogy that Paulo Coelho did should I go to the familiar which is a group of sheep that are following the normal the model that society has designed for them the model that maybe their parents were thinking it is it is good for them and it serves at certain time getting A's, getting top schools, it serves, but it serves. But then if you feel that unfulfillment and then you don't, you don't pursue it, you are not giving yourself a service and you're not serving the world as well. And you're not serving the creation and we can go back to that. Then the guy continue his journey and he sees omens and every time, everywhere he goes, he experiences something different. And then he sees distractions, and one of them was the women he met in the, uh, on the way. I'm not saying that women are distractions. It just, it's a metaphor that the guy gave. And then at the end, he discovered that the, the purpose was basically the journey. The journey of becoming you. The, the journey of uh, and becoming um, and letting that unique way of self-expression burst and, 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 and continue to the expansion of, uh, of life, right? Um, that's for me, like how I, I see where I am at right now. So I, I'm continuing my 
discovery of and organizing the science of and the spiritual philosophy of purpose. But through that, I mean, like I discovered tons of amazing stuff and I can't keep it to myself. I have to share it. And uh, yeah, since then, as I grew, honestly, I'm very grateful. Like my coaching practice uh, grew with that uh, because people can see that I can offer them something and um, I really do with all my heart, you know. So it's part of my purpose right now. Is this going to stop there? No. Uh, I have a direction that I, I want to go uh, toward for the next couple of years, actually. Basically, in the next couple of years, uh, I have a knowingness what I'm, where I am going. Where is that? So I have to write four books. Like I have the book ideas. Uh, um, I'm not going to say I have the outline, but it's like somewhere in the ether. Um, and it will help me fulfill this purpose and it will help me uh, share because I have learned something. Sometimes depression can manifest as unexpressed potential. And if you keep things in to yourself, somehow your, your soul, it, something from inside want to go to the world and you have to let it out. And then once you do, you, you feel better. Got it. Yeah. This question of self-expression, this, mm -hmm. is a, this is a big one for me mm -hmm. because I remember um, way back in the day in 2014, we started a Facebook group. Not The one we have now is a newer one. It's like maybe four years old. But the one we had before that was it like eight years ago. And someone, you know, was talking with people on my team and everyone was like, well, what's the purpose of the group? What's the purpose of the group? And I said, self-expression. That's it, man. As men, we want to say things. We want to be vulnerable. We want to be very, we want to be like, like feminine sort of energy where we maybe want to cry. Maybe we want to dance. Maybe we want to express something that happened in childhood and ask for help. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see anything for me out there in the world to, to actually do that. So I was like, you know what? I'm sure other people don't have this either. Mm. If I don't have it, probably don't. So let's do, let's start a Facebook group that's private. And it will, people will be able to say things without ju judgment. Mm -hmm. No one will judge them because we will monitor this group. We will be very strict with this group. And if there are anyone who judges, they're kicked out. You know, one strike policy. Mm -hmm. And that did really well because me, as well as other people, we were being vulnerable. We were talking, just like even Aphrodite Nation now. We're vulnerable. People share things that they wouldn't, you know, sometimes they accidentally click and it goes to their main profile. <laughs> and they're like, oh my God, you know, I, I put it on the main profile. But yeah. I, I, you know, one of my aunts is like, what the hell are you doing, man? And I quickly <laughs> deleted it and put it on Aphrodite. Yeah. So when it comes to self-expression, as children... Men, generally, in most cultures, are taught to not be aggressive, uh, not be expressive. Mm. Aggression is a different story, but not be expressive. So, for example, in Russian culture, Ukrainian culture, maybe like, you know, that generally that Soviet air, you know, area. In history, if you expressed yourself, and even now, you could be killed. Mm -hmm. Simple, right? Yeah. I mean, we know from, from the Gulag days when Stalin had all these prison prisoners and they were just jailed because the, for, for like literally no reason. If you were able to express yourself fully, then you would basically go to jail mm -hmm. or worse, right? And Viktor Frankl and his buddies perhaps went to jail for that too mm -hmm. because they were you know a doctor or a scientist they put the, those people in jail first right so if someone listening to us is belongs in a society in which it is not easy or impossible 
to express yourself. You know, there is no freedom of speech. I mean, in China, there's no freedom of speech. Russia, there's basically no freedom of speech. North Korea. I mean, there's many places like that in the world. Maybe half the world is like that. And also in, even in America, in Canada. I mean, nowadays, more so in Canada. There is this thing where you better shut up, mm -hmm. right? Like when we're kids, we raise our hand and the teacher is like, you know, put your hand down. It's not time right now to ask questions, mm -hmm. right? We are stifled in asking questions. We are stifled in dancing. We are stifled, right? So because most societies are like that, is there a maybe some technique or some thought experiment, some mindset that someone needs to embody to become free in their self-expression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, I see. So basically because we were conditioned to not share, to not express, to not uh, be ourselves. Because you said when you are a kid, usually you don't uh you don't care if yeah. this is right or wrong if you start crying yeah the, the mo hey hey they don't cry it. don't cry exactly and then you have this conditioning so that is the the journey of being okay to be yourself right and um if you become um confident or you become aware of that your beauty is in what makes you unique. Your beauty is not in being the same and become, you relax into that assumption because it is the truth. You will slowly share more of yourself and you will slowly connect to your unique form of self expression. Uh, doesn't matter the form but i think it is an important part of life he there is a spiritual teacher who lived in the 20s Scovelson. she calls it uh, she calls something the quadrant of life simple health wealth relationships and perfect self-expression and then if you look at it like what would make your life the base of your life you know health wealth Whatever you, how you define it, that's not my problem or, or not my focus. Health, wealth, relationships, and perfect self-expression. Okay? So um, perfect self-expression means my way of being me and, and, and serving the world. And like sometimes I work with clients who are afraid from, to, to offer a service to get paid and I'm saying you are doing a service to the world by being yourself or by offering your gift so maybe a technique which is to change your mindset and thoughts around the the how comfortable to be you how comfortable to offer what you have literally the world need it and you shouldn't be um you should be ashamed of it or hide behind uh, behind uh, whatever form of uh, avoidance. One, one time I wrote that long time ago, a couple of years ago, I think I said, I said, your purpose is waiting for your courage to catch up. <laughs> uh, because uh, deep inside, deep inside, you might know what you have desire to do. Desire is big thing. And then, uh, but you repress yourself, you stop yourself for X reasons. One of them is because you were raised in a society where you can't express yourself. And I was raised in a society where we can't express ourselves. I even was raised in a household that you can't express yourself. Okay, but this is maybe important for people to know. Me growing up, yes, my dad didn't allow us to, to say things my way or the highway. That's, that's the model you have to follow. And then by me embracing who I am, by me uh, working on my personal power, so to speak, not force, 
means natural come to me. It was a step to to healing the relationship in my family. Like the day I I basically said to my dad, man, I love you, but this is not how. This is not how you should behave with me today. That man gave a healing to me, to my dad, to the relationship to my dad with my mom and to my sister. Well, right? So there is there is always a price. There is a price to change and there is a price to not change. And that's what people always when they come, oh, I should invest in myself, I should buy this book, I should uh, listen to this podcast. You are paying a price. And by not embracing who you truly are, you are also paying a price. And the price, I can't tell you right now because I don't know details about your life, but you will pay it in certain form. So by being you, mean reaching a higher for form of self-expression, you are doing a service to yourself, to your family, to your ancestors, and to the whole world. And you are aligning with creation because the seventh law of creation is the law of generation. What are you today generating emotionally, physically, and spiritually to the world? If not, you are not aligning with the basics of creation. And I, so to, to make it clear to people, I always ask this question, would you jump from the 10th floor? And they, the, the obvious question, the answer is no. Why? Because of the law of gravity. I'm following it. Do you agree that's a natural law? The answer is yes. Yeah, if I tell you that there are, there are other laws that are governing creation and how things work, would you follow them? If not, you would be as stupid as someone who jumps from the 10th floor because you're not aligning. So you aligning with creation is one of them is the law of generation, which is you, you want to create something to this world emotionally, physically, or spiritually. And one way of doing that is being yourself. Being yourself equals to finding your uniqueness and being comfortable to share it to the world. Because if you will affect one person, you have done something. And that will give better meaning to your life. This is where um, there's, a, there's one point where it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Okay. Let's take the example of the Titanic. Mm-hmm. Because that's what came to mind when I was when I was feeling out what you were saying. In the Titanic, in the movie I'm talking about, you know, with yeah, yeah. Leo Caprio and them, we have the captain, right? The guy walking around. He has some purpose, like to get the Titanic to the other side, maybe, whatever. Yeah, okay. Um, then you have like, you know, his assistant, the engineer guy who like built the ship. You know, he's also very like careful. He's checking things, making sure the equipment is working, you know, the, the steering wheel is working, all that. Then you have the passengers, like, you know, Kate Winslet, Leo Caprio, Jack, you know, Jack and the family. And their purpose is like maybe to have fun, to find love, to fuck around, right? To eat, have fest- festivities, whatever. Show off, you know, has status. So they have some purpose. Mm. And I don't mean purpose in life. I mean purpose of the trip. That's the definition. Simple, yeah. purpose of the trip. Yeah. But then... In the basement were the the slaves, Mm -hmm. right? Who were putting the coal into the fire, right? And in the movie, when you see those people, it's like, isn't it hard to have purpose when you're like poor and you're exerting this physical torture Mm. on yourself or take another example of when the slaves came to america right when when the europeans went and you know they wanted to have plantations whatever so they shipped a bunch of slaves to the u.s Mm -hmm. now that slave is living with a master is it is it not so difficult to have purpose when you are being enslaved and you are under someone's control 
you could be happy. Don't get me wrong. I mean, that slave could be dying in Africa somehow. And the, the, the master like changed his life and he's very thankful. Whatever, right? Or some, la- some girl who was like some beautiful girl who, you know, the, the master decided to have children with her. And now her children are super happy in America. Sure. But is it not, aren't there some, like Maslow, right? Maslow's hierarchy. Aren't there these basic needs that need to be met before the self-actualization, which is purpose, or, or from the way I'm feeling you, purpose is like <laughs> with the other mm. first level of needs. Yeah, I, I told you that I have a, a bottom-to-down approach to this. But he, for this example, the, leaders, the real slavery is slavery of mind. Right. So to talk about the spiritual side of this, when you said all oh, those people are in slave in difficult situations, the spiritual teacher Ramdas talk about this story when he talks to, to his guru and he said, What about the people dying here? What about the people here? And then he said and his guru he said, Don't you see everything is perfect? Then I, I was like, huh, oh, wait a second. Why he say that? Don't you see everything is perfect? Because somehow they chose to. Now, you may ask me, how do they choose that bad situation? To stay in the spiritual side, there might be karmic contracts they are fulfilling. Let's not talk about that. But also, they made the decision that they only believe that's that's only what's possible for them. And why I'm saying this? Why am I allowed to say this? Because I grew up in poor environment. I know what means to, to not have money. I know what means to uh, say, to hear no every time. We can't. Oh, oh why, I have, why I have this life today? Oh, is it because I'm a chosen one or better than people? No. Because I refused to be slave in mind because I removed this limitation because I discovered that as a human being you can be more than whatever your situation is. Okay. So that's my answer for this. (laughs) The, The mind enslavement exactly this is a this is a this is a very important topic because Mm -hmm. addictions are a big component of slavery so simple example a lot of people they have addictions to drugs Mm -hmm. alcohol um social media porn gambling um self torture you know negative thoughts that's an addiction definitely So being stuck, and I'm sure you you had clients which were depressed or, you know, semi-depressed, whatever. Mm -hmm. One of the, one of the component, one of the main components, maybe the key component of depression is learned helplessness, right? Mm -hmm. And whenever they do animal models to create depression in like a a monkey or a rat what they basically do is the monkey wants to do something and he keeps failing he wants to do it he fails he wants to do it he fails same thing with the rat he wants to go there he can't he wants to go there he can't and they learn that they're helpless exactly now with most addictions there are pills Mm mm-hmm Right. So, for example, people who have anxiety and depression, there's SSRIs. Mm-hmm. Right. People, um, people who are addicted to, let's say, alcohol, or they have gambling issues. You know, there's CBT, or there, there's a certain uh, psychotherapy. There's psychoanalysis. There's stuff out there, right, to help. So, is it possible to use purpose? 
meaning in life to somehow alleviate a chemical dependence on something. Because when you are, because I've been there, I know how it feels mm-hmm. to be addicted to gambling or porn or social media. I was there. I know how it feels. I know I was helpless. Mm-hmm. I could not control my behavior. So if someone is addicted, is it because they lack purpose? Mm-hmm. So you, you mentioned learn helplessness and you mentioned stuckness and you mentioned addiction. So to the, this, this experiment with rats and, and monkeys, they are failing, then they get depressed. Why? Because they, are, they made a decision about themselves that I am a failure based on what? Based on the past. However, the purpose we said is a desired future self. Something that will really pull you. Uh, Wayne Dyer said, you, you know, like, your past is like the anchor that is holding the boat from leaving the shore. So if you have a destination, you will be looking at the future. You're not going to be anchoring with your past. And that's why, by the way, not with all my clients, but some of my clients, I have to go with the process of deep self-forgiveness and forgiveness to everyone and to every decision they ever made in their life because that's the only way we can move forward before choosing a, choosing a destination. Because it's like life is like this recipient full of dirt. And we have really to, to in order to put clear water, we have really to remove that, right? So self-forgiveness or forgiveness in general is... is is key there before even choosing a purpose and um, and then we can fill it with the, the good stuff. Okay. Then um, that's why if you are depressed, if you are stuck, you might be living in the past. The second one, second reason you are stuck is you're avoiding something. And most people always come to me and they say, yes, this is true. Like because they say, oh, okay, I'm avoiding. Because again, it's the quality of a question you ask them. So like, what are you avoiding? And my work with people have taught me that don't take the first answer as the final answer. <laughs> because I won't be serving them. Because when I am working with someone, I see him, but I see his higher, a higher image of him or her. That they're going to become that. I have to hold that to that, not to, to what they say to me. So I have to call them on their bullshit, like, so what are you avoiding? And the third one, yes, they don't have a clear destination to go to, so they stay, they try to fill fill up their time with uh, sort of addictions or with sort of, uh, um, anyways, all of them are addiction, like whether you're taking drugs or watching porn is an addiction or, or addicted to social media, it's like you are addicted to something somewhere. So... Now, to talk about chemical uh, chemical imbalance, I'm not Mm going to say, oh, yes, you have to, uh, if you have a clear direction for your life, you will solve a chemical imbalance. I'm not qualified, sincerely, to talk about that, but I only can tell you my experience. So when I I quit my job, I I got like a, a hit. Because it's an identity crisis. This is the hedge fund job. Yeah, the hedge fund job. So it's an identity crisis. You've been building all your life to do this, and then it's not it. And then look at the coincidence. So now, so I feel stable and stable emotionally. And then the coincidence that at that exact time, my relationship fall. So my friend jokes at me and he say, bro, you got a combo. <laughs> you know, you got everything at the same time. A twofer. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, but it was the best thing that ever happened in my life. Are you take us back to that that moment again, mm-hmm. uh, if you if you want? Yeah, relive the pain. Oh no, I'm 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 at peace with it. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. That's mm-hmm. good. That day, when you had the identity shift, or the identity crisis, whatever you want to call it, the feelings you had. I had that, a panic attack. Okay. So for people who don't know, panic attack. It feels like you're going to die. 
but you but you don't and probably you won't but feel that you're gonna like so i had a panic attack that started the series and then of course you go to doctor because i'm stable what doctor gonna do to you pills pills they say take pills then uh, i'm still in a relationship at that time but at that time uh was the relationship stable or was it something like the job like yeah the relationship yeah wasn't uh, something like a, a divine counterpart or something like that so but at that time you know like it, it it was a blessing as well because at your when at your hard time because as a man or a woman you you want to be always at the top it's it's a law law rhythm polarity but you want your partner to know if they can be there so this partner chose to not be there at, during that time. So you get the double hit, but then you have the pills. Like you, you take the pill one day, then I put it on the garbage. So Good. you tried and you you yeah. felt not aligned. Yeah, because I was like, "Since what's what's this, right?" Is what I did at that time. They gave me the pills, and you feel unstable. You take the pill, you feel stable. Then I study all the successful people in the world and I'm like 99% of them have lived some struggle. This is part of the path. Put that on the on the garbage. I, I would I would say like since I was young, maybe I was a person who was good at I say nothing can control me. I always been saying that in the sense that y- y- you can't have power over me, me over my mind, right? Over my everything is mine. So yeah, when I put that pill tablets in the, the garbage, I just, I said, oh, so I'm just gonna be free of this. And eventually what I was doing that time, if I was free and just free, no, I was going into this journey of uh, podcasting, of uh, studying for, um, because I discovered this, uh, this part of me that is different than math and, and progr- uh, coding and whatever. And I'm discovering this. I'm, I'm why I'm saying these phrases and saying these words, and I'm writing, and I'm like, yeah, this is something. And again, I was uh, taken in my journal, and one day I was like, oh, I connected everything, and I draw pictures, and I was into something, right? And it was a journey of one year. I didn't go back to work for one year. For people who don't know, and at one one year, I invested in uh, in self uh improvement uh, and then that led me to like what i'm part of what i'm doing today uh, to answer a question about yeah this would this solve your addiction i would say give it a try yeah give it a try F- like fix your f- fix your diet fix your community fix your um level of physical um and physical activity and then choose something to live for. And then if it doesn't solve your 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 depression, your addiction, maybe at that time you can you can judge. I made a video like I think a year ago and I said please don't rush into judging yourself. Saying that I am addicted or I am I am depressed because that's a form of creation. You could be creating that right now as you speak. It's it's a law. It's yeah. a law, right? So so before judging that I am addicted or I am um I am depressed, what if I just go and take a blood panel? Maybe I'm deficient on D3, you know? And then I'm judging that I am I am I am depressed. It's it's, it's like a little bit harsh. Just fix all those things. It's it's just four elements. Uh, and then maybe you can see. So be be more rational, more critical of your own self judgment, and take your time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because because I always say that you want to pay attention to what you say to yourself about yourself. Uh, because your you, own thoughts, self talk. You you all self talk. Yeah, you are creating it. Okay, so to, to, I don't talk about that more, right? So. When, um, yeah, there are two two things I have to talk about here. So one is um, w- how we create our lives, like the, by the way we think and the way we, we speak. This is a very 
speak speech is a very 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 powerful tool that people take for granted uh-huh. and one of the ways that i think i i succeed in working with people because i pay attention to their words because it will tell you something but also now we can talk about the science part of it like how how consciousness means your your emotions mean your vibration your thoughts can can affect matter it's true in quantum physics all the papers are there and are verified i'm not here to invent science so the way you speak to would affect the, the experience of emoto the japanese uh, businessman on how consciousness can change the molecular structure of water it's just one obvious uh, proof of that so they they took this recipients and they put uh, words on the recipients and some they uh, expose them to music and then they so they they can show that it changed the microscopic uh, the microscopic uh, structure of molecule of water so a recipient with the word love and the word peace it's not going to give the same molecular structure as the word war for example so you are creating a, as you speak this is something has been uh, taught in all the esoteric science in all the religion as well and it's the it's the it's the concept of synchronicity the right? conce- concept of synchronicity it's in uh, what sense so carl jung was the first person to really mm-hmm. really define it concretely and his notion was your thoughts exactly what you just said mm-hmm. can change matter and one example of this in my own life it's happened so many times mm-hmm. is literally i will be going somewhere and i'll think of someone and they appear ah yeah it's exactly what the fuck happened here it's a particular case like of it, it. it it's like a like a 0% chance like simple example mm-hmm. me and marta when we were leaving tulum um uh, march of last year uh we were going to live in texas for a few months so we we left tulum and we were taking our bike to digital jungle or somewhere to say goodbye or i don't know we were doing something and as we're going we said uh, no we already said our goodbye it wasn't that we were going to get some water something simple and we were just going to go in our bike and come back as we're on our bike um i say you know marta we said bye to everybody but we forgot carol <laughs> i mean she's one of our best friends in tulum we forgot her and ayub that moment a car takes a right towards us mm-hmm. and it's fucking carol damn and and we have a thing where we'll look at each other we like yeah makes sense makes sense yeah it makes sense exactly how could it not be exactly so yeah. now we're in this notion like well duh mm-hmm. cuz in the past it'd be like no 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 Uh, come on it's it's just it's coincidence mm-hmm. right but now it's happened so often okay okay so let's define the word coincidence because like as Wayne Dyer say like coincidence you're t- it, it has this um uh, r- r- uh kind of use in the latin uh s- sorry the etymology yeah, yeah coincidence is two angles that coincides perfectly so you are using oh. a word that say things that fits perfectly to describe a random event mm. which is not random now let's speak about creation right so everything in life exists as a possibility so everything is a probability function it's a chance creation to 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 make this bottle or to make me it uses a similar type of molecules what's it, what is the difference is the arrangement of molecules how this arrangement of molecule works is through attention and intention right so same way that the the experience on the water has changed the mole- the molecular structure the same way thi- that's the same way things get created in the world and synchronicity is just an example of it and I, i you said yeah i live so many of them because you became an aligned person you yeah, and, and and then things works for you that way and one day something happened in front of my dad and i was like you know i don't visit my parents often but i was like dad are they so- in tunisia yeah okay i'm going soon 
So, and I was like, uh, there I want to tell you something. That's how my life work <laughs> works, you know? So yeah, so back to this, so like the, uh, the self-image and the self-talk. So one way, be careful because your, your thoughts and your words are basically changing the rearrangement of molecules. Man, I'm not saying woo stuff. If you want to see ex uh, science, go look for some um, uh, experiment on the um, uh, on the quantum physics uh, on how how a molecule split itself in in the accelerator. Um, it exists. We can talk about it. But also, you can look at the the work of uh, Bruce Lipton, um, molecular biology, and how he say how the the gene doesn't define the 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 fate uh, of sorry how the DNA doesn't define the fate of the molecules it's basically consciousness what it is it's your beliefs how you form your beliefs you either listen to them you either saw them you either spoke them now talk about self image uh, but no before uh, before self image yeah uh, I I really like this topic of consciousness uh huh. So, in Stoicism, they always talk about logos. Mm -hmm. Like logos, you know, don't mess with the logos. Logos governs what's happening in the universe, right? It's like they define this logos as something that is overarching the world, mm. right? Then you have a lot nowadays people say consciousness, right? And then you have certain people, like the guy who wrote Sapiens, Yuval Noah Harari. Brilliant guy. His concept of consciousness, or the, the, I guess the best guess that he has is, it's an epiphenomenon. It's not like consciousness created anything. It's that the brain became so complex that consciousness emerged somehow. So I want to get your perspective on this because one of the things that we hear a lot now, even like Sam Harris is all the ta time talking about consciousness. Like it's like every second word is consciousness. Mm -hmm. So is that just our way of saying God or our way of saying universe, chi, energy? Like what the hell? Is consciousness just another word? Like awareness. Uh, yeah, so if you look at the, how you, maybe the, the Indian Sanskrit define this, I would say consciousness is where everything happens and awareness is where consciousness is happens, is happening. And yeah, and all of it is part of what you say, the, all there is, the complex mind. But given the, the uh, holo, hologram, hologram nature of things, we are a particular case of this, in the sense. Uh, God with a small g, as opposed to a God with a capital G. Right? So uh, we have that similar uh, creation power if we if we we know how these things works, if we understand how these things work, and if we remove the noise, means the more puri purified we are, we, the more closer to this higher this higher thing uh, we become. I hope I gave you a no, <laughs> I got it. But you know, as again, like if you give clear definition, you're not gonna sure. Reach. It's like God. Yeah. Right? It's like God. Yeah. But Ayub, when we, one thing you said that really resonates with me is define where you want to end up, right? Have this vision, mm -hmm. this imagine yourself in the future, mm -hmm. your potential, and then devise your consciousness towards that mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. right? So, for example, if I imagine myself, you always say 80th birthday, right? 80th. Mm -hmm. If I imagine myself at 80, so basically the double of what I am now, mm -hmm. I imagine myself in a world where, you know, I have grandkids and, um, and obviously kids and we have a family, we are happy, 
Um, if there's an issue, we talk to each other. You know, we live with each other. You know, people are close. There's nature outside. There is um, creativity happening. I have this big bookshelf, you know, big library in the house where, where I can study and, and, and discover and, and learn and read. This is the type of, you know, a, a beautiful relationship, um, you know, it's, it, traveling uh, out of love, not, not fear or, or FOMO or bullshit like that, just out of love, right? Helping people out who need help still having the podcast, mm -hmm. right? This is the world I imagine. Mm -hmm. So if I can clearly imagine what I will be at 80 years old, mm -hmm. then you're saying, and again, correct me if this is not exactly, what you're saying is live today like that. Live today like that. Meaning the person I will be at 80, that mind be it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it could appear that the same way your friend Carol appeared in when you were on the bike. You have to become that now. Now, the thing is, you want to also understand that you're living in a 3D world, right? So, means if I gave you all the food you ever wanted in your life right now on this table, you'd be like, hey, you probably bring me a plate every day. That would be a better for, way to enjoy it. And then there is a concept of time in this world and there is a concept of when you become a match to that okay in the sense that um yeah there is this uh, kind of new model that i started talking about started talking about so you have your desire your expectation has to match your desires your expectations has to match your desires now the problem is not that your expectation has too much your desires. The problem is why you can't have, have your expectation matching your desires all the time. But should we have desire? Yeah, of course. It, it is also part of uh, understanding uh, what you want to do with your life. Because we humans have this power thing, thing, powerful thing called emotions. It's like a guide. Right. At one time I told my client this, I said, imagine you're walking on the street and someone behind you with a stick, they don't talk like this. Can I do? So you're here, someone behind you with a stick, they don't talk. If you go right and you're supposed to go left, they hit you. That's your negative emotion. That's your higher self guiding you through emotion. Uh, emotion is the stick. Uh huh. When you feel that nudge, so desire is amazing because that's what tell you here, where there, to orient. What, this is a Jordan Peterson. You what, orient yourself through what is you're inclined towards through and excitement emotion. and emotion. Because excitement. that's how that's the only way you feel it, right? And that's you know how you that you care, right? So back to expectation, right? So your expectation has to match your desire because you desire the thing, but you don't have it today. But you have to... But you're expecting to have it. You have to expect it and be sure that you have it now. And that's where the topic of faith comes. When the lady had the healing and went to thank Jesus and he told her, it's your faith, it's not me. So that's, that's why religion talk about faith, expectation. You have to have faith in your expectation. Neville Goddard is you have to have faith in your future assumption fulfilled. No, the problem why people can't, people in general, right, can't keep the expectation. And my, my thought experiment on that is because, one, they have beliefs that stop them subconsciously, right? Because they have trapped emotion. Trauma. Trauma. Trapped emotion. The body keeps a score, right? I have the book. Yeah. You don't deserve that thing. And you have a, you have, it's literally like trapped emotion somewhere in your body. And then once you free it. Um, so this is a way. Mm hmm to feel what you're inclined towards, listen to your body, okay? 
because it's not necessary that only pain will resonate with trauma, but also pleasure and what's your purpose may also be in the body. Like maybe you get something in the stomach, you know, some hibby jibbies, and you're like, oh, I'm excited towards this. Mm. Maybe your breathing will become faster, mm -hmm. right? But not pain. It, it doesn't have to be, right? Okay, yeah. So there is this uh, channeler, if you if you believe in, in channeling, um, channel entity called Bashar. Bashar. And uh, I, I forgot his name, but if you if you Google Bashar or YouTube, you'll find his videos. His philosophy is, is basically exactly this. Your higher self will speak to you through excitement. Oh. Uh-huh. So now it's for you to um, understand the messages. So this excitement is this fear or something. Um, but also I have my thoughts around that. Like also your fear can guide you. Your fears can guide you. And I wrote an article one time. There are fears that you should avoid. There are fears that are just emotional blocks you, you have to address. And there are fears that are hidden desires. Like, why do you have this, this guy out there having a fear to talk into a girl? Okay, if he has an emotional block, let's solve it. He, he still has a fear. Why he has a fear anyway? Because he has a desire to talk to her. Because if, if I don't care, I don't care. Why am I having the fear anyways? Uh, when I started this journey, I had a fear of being on, on camera. And I was like doing work, work, work. I was like, oh my God, I have a fear. I was like, why I even have this fear? Ah, because I want to be in the camera. Uh, now I define the direction. Now, what is the skills gap? What are the beliefs? W what emotional blocks I have to solve? Solve the emotional blocks, learn the skills. It becomes a, a gift. Do you believe, Ayub, that every person has a gift? And here's why I ask. Mm -hmm. Can the earth function if this is true? Because we're still going to need people to do bullshit stuff. Are we not? Like, think about it. This MacBook that sits in front of me, this iPhone, you know, the iPhones that are recording, like all, they are made in China at the Foxconn factory where seven-year-old kids who are very unhappy working. And the reason we know they're unhappy is because they try to commit suicide by jumping from the window and they put trampoline on the floor so they cannot even die. This is China. It's like literally happening right now. Mm. So if you look it up, it's on YouTube, Foxconn. You can see the, the, the videos of people jumping off and not dying because they get a trampoline. <laughs> um, so the... And, and there's also videos of spies who got jobs at Foxconn, like Silicon Valley guys, engineers who are like, oh, let me go work for Foxconn and let me see how it is. Mm -hmm. And then he came back to America and reported what the, the, the atrocities that they went through mm. at Foxconn. So for Earth to work, can everyone have a purpose? Don't we need people who are robots, machines, slaves mm -hmm. right there's a book by uh cone something cone uh i don't remember his first name but uh maybe i don't remember but it's the the uh something of some so the progress of civilization something like that mm -hmm. and it, basically in the book he talks about for there to be progress scientific technological whatever we need the hierarchy Mm -hmm. Right, we we will need people who have great purpose, but then we will also need people who have no purpose, mm -hmm. because if everyone had a purpose, who's going to work at the factory? If everyone had a, for, a purpose, who's going to design the, the 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 water bottle? You know, who's going to be the, the the farmer who's like digging up the 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 coffee bean or whatever? Like, there has to be perhaps, and again, you 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 tell me maybe a hierarchy of purpose where some people like Elon Musk have this, you know, the, the, when someone asked Elon what's his purpose, he says he wants to advance human consciousness. Mm -hmm. Simple, right? He wants for humans to realize 
what is the next step of our consciousness, the next leap. Mm -hmm. That's his life purpose. But then if everyone had this purpose, mm -hmm. we are primates after all, right? Yeah. We are we are cousins of the, of the chimps mm -hmm. and and the gorillas. So they don't. I mean, again, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm assuming that animals don't have the same level of conscious thinking and purpose thinking as humans. They don't. Yeah. So, so because we are we, and if you believe in it, if we have evolved from a certain ancestor who's a you know a primate ancestor. We have that in us, and now all of a the sudden there's this thing called consciousness and God and spirituality. So could it be that our brains are just wired in a way to produce these concepts of consciousness and blah, 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 but we are simply primates pretending to have purpose? Mm. Yeah, well, so yeah, I'll, I'll be... Maybe, maybe the answer would be funny for you, but let's start there. So, yeah, so we have evolved. And then I think uh, Nawari, the, 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 the writer of Sapiens, yeah, he he has a famous TED talk. I, I think everybody should watch as well, like what makes us different from, different from the chimpanzee. And then basically, yes, consciousness and also that we have, we can collaborate without knowing each other. Okay. But starting off there, like... Does anyone should have a purpose? That's the thing. I, I didn't say that a purpose has to be like uh, Tesla, like doing Tesla or advancing a human human uh, consciousness as a as a, uh, Elon Musk, right? Because when you say, oh, does anyone have to should, uh, should have a purpose? My philosophy is that you should have a desired life direction, a desired future self. Okay. Future version of you. There isn't those people that were jumping, jumping to me to commit suicide because they didn't have, have hope. Hope in what? Hope in seeing a, a different future for themselves. Okay. That's what makes them uh, jump. Because if I'm working today, if I'm working today and I see a desired future self for me, I see my work as a, maybe a step for me to go there. And that's why I always talk about finding balance between your day job, your job, and what you want to have after. And then mm. you can still keep working, but you know that job is helping you come into the model energy purpose blocks. You need financial resources to invest to invest in, in, in what you want to do next. Okay, now you want to go to the bigger picture, like you say, yeah, everybody has to have a purpose. Why we're having a purpose? Because here, my friend, like I think you're putting in question all this model that we have designed. No, no, the hierarchy thing. Why hierarchy exists? Because we have this monetary system. We have this type of companies and jobs and everything. So the real question is like, is this, is this the model? <laughs> you said, can, can... How can it be any other way? Exactly. You said, how can it be any other way? We don't know what we don't know. Everything is a human imagination. If if you wanna, if you bring the, if you today you destroy everything on Earth, you keep it livable, and you take the eight billion human that we have and you put them back, <laughs> right? And <laughs> would we create money the way it is now, or would we do something else? Would we? create uh, a hierarchy system where people paid for their jobs and someone paid more than other and someone has to do a, a lesser job and someone has to do a higher job to, so to speak or would we go in a, in a world where everybody is getting creative and and offer something to the world so so that hierarchy you're talking about it exists because of us because we are living a specific model the matrix, <laughs> maybe we should live outside. And that's what I'm, what I'm inviting people to do. Like, you know, the, the, the reason that those guys went to, to suicide, to commit suicide is they didn't see hope in there doing something different. Now, we said it before, everything is perfect. 
yes, we chose to do what we are doing. Those guys, consciously or unconsciously, have chosen to to be that. Right, and then when uh, um, Ramdas got asked about got asked about like free will or or, or things are are done to me, and he said uh, his comment on that. That's the reason on of the smirk on the face of Buddha. Like, go figure, <laughs> you know. So yeah, so it's like for me, everything is perfect because if you give me the same guy that who's who's on the working on the fa- in the factory of the chi- in china and he's or she is open enough to remove all the beliefs about himself and about his past and we install a new beliefs in him that there is a different a different version of you that could exist in the future he might be able to do his job and uh, without um, without feeling unhappy but also without without feeling satisfied that's the only job that he could do and instead he will focus on building a better future that's why today I say don't listen to someone who say leave your passion and quit your job no find a meaning to your job and connect to a to something you want to do really like something you want to do outside your natural inclination a different element and find balance between both so at that time your job doesn't mean anything uh, sorry your job is not going to be a problem for you because you know it's a part of uh, the equation and today like when someone this is a problem i face a lot someone come to me it's like i hate my job right so we have to look there unless you are experiencing some toxic environment some harassment or something maybe you hate your job because you feel it's meaningless as a possibility can we find something you really desire to do and you focus 80 percent of your energy there 20 percent do your job and find balance between these two things and use the finances you get from the job to finance what you truly desire and the lifestyle you want to have, that person will have a better sense of well-being. And I'm I'm a living proof of that. It's just that's how I start and that's how what I'm doing. Are you? I want to talk about dancing now. Yes, please. this is a this is a very important topic to me because, um, just to put things in context, a couple of nights ago we went to do Brazilian zouk. Oh yeah, at uh, Digital Jungle, there was a teacher. He's um, uh, Miles, and then uh, Seidel, Chris Seidel, who's also a teacher. You know, he teaches here. He lives all over the world, in Brazil, and so on. Mm-hmm. And um, so, from my perspective, um, I've always loved to dance since I was a kid. I think most people do. It's not like a new thing, but I've always um, felt. Whenever I danced, especially alone, I felt freedom Mm -hmm. because I move to the music as I feel without defining or having a purpose to dancing, (laughs) right? You know, we we say, oh, why are you doing an ice bath? Oh, because I want to increase dopamine. Oh, why are you working out? Mm -hmm. Oh, because I want to look good for this wedding. Oh, why are you um, studying so hard? Because I want to make my parents happy. There's always a purpose behind things. But I feel that when I'm dancing, just personal experience, there's never a purpose. That dancing is the purpose. It is it. There's no end. It's it. And and you know this very well because you I mean you are an expert at different styles of dance, so you, you understand the, the theory. But without any skill, expertise, mastery, just from my own inner child perspective, I've always loved to dance. Mm -hmm. Now, the difference is that now, whenever I'm dancing, no matter where I am, I have stopped giving a fuck Mm. about others, like at all, Mm -hmm. right? Where I can, the way I would dance at home naked 
is the way I dance when others are around. Mm -hmm. The same fucking way, right? Now, that journey is maybe one of the most beautiful journeys I've felt in my life. Wow. The ability to move my body, shame-free, guilt-free, total freedom. Mm -hmm. And give others the permission to do the same. Mm. And what I'm trying to understand is, what is it about dancing that is so special? And you would be a perfect person to answer this. Mm. Because like for me, I am not a fan of instructional dancing, right? So for example, in salsa, bachata, blah, 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 you have to follow stuff. There's some rules. Basic, fun, right? yeah. And once you master something, perhaps you can break the rules. You can. You do whatever the hell. So for me, I've always resonated with freestyle, do how you feel, just create the moves. Mm. So from your perspective, what is this magic of body movement to music? And we can also go back to our discussion of why certain interpretations of religion forbid it. Mm. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, I've been dancing for like four or five years and I've taught dancing, etc. And it's um, the way I put it right now is uh, my lifestyle passion. So I have to put it on my schedule once or twice a week, depending. Okay. So to answer your question, I have thought deeply about this as well, right? Because it's, um, I think dancing was a pivotal thing that happened to me. Really? Uh-huh. So... So think about it like this, when it started, like a guy who's 100% left brain and now he's taking dance classes and becoming passionate about learning a style and and then become obsessed and then become better rather than better. And then at the same time in my life, I start seeing something different. I, I start, it was like the gate that was, it was like the door that, opened me to this journey of having feelings, sensing emotions, admiring that part of the, of the humanity. Before that, I swear, I was like a rock. Um, um, I say how people have emotion. I think I don't. I think I don't have a heart, right? And because why? Because somehow during my childhood, somehow maybe I built walls just to continue living the life, you know? That's what people actually end up doing. They build emotional walls, heart walls, heart shells to just continue living their lives. But that's not the model. Like that's a, that's a, that's not the model how we should live. It's now we should, we, we should have, as opposed to have this left brain only life or right brain only life, we talk now about whole brain, left and right, right? as opposed to have only live in the mind, right now you have to have a balance between heart and mind. So for me, I think dancing opened that thing to me. Now, like, then I think, what, what is this magic about dancing? Okay. So the when we dance, um, it actually some people use it as a healing uh, modality because it basically free some trapped emotions, some energies that let energy flows in the body in, in, in some different ways. I have experienced myself seeing people like from outside that I meet them before dance and after dance. And it was like, you know, like when it's like when you go to a spiritual ceremony, each one will get what they need at the moment. And I have seen and I heard people, um, then telling me stories about, oh, I, I, I become more confident. I, I, I actually don't. Right now, I don't care what people think of me. I lost whatever number of pounds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So that's, that's been my observation around dancing. And then my deeper thought around dancing, which is... Um, 
I have always this thinking, and I'm like, certain things are not coming from this level, this level of life. When I was a kid, when I go to a math class and I see those complex equations, I say, a human brain can never come up with that. This is coming from somewhere else, <laughs> right? <laughs> then when I see dancing, the moves, like, you see the complex move in salsa, in bachata, in zouk, hip hop. I'm like, a human brain can never come with this one. This is coming from somewhere higher, right? So, and that was my thoughts about yoga. One time, I, I was on this spiritual trip and I, I was showing things that are magnificent. And I ask the question, there is no way a human being can see this without being into this type, into this type of substance or spiritual journey. And the answer they say, yes, no, they can. It's through yoga. And I was like, how? And I, they, I start seeing angles and how each disposition is angle of yoga because it's, those are angles at the end of the way. They are aligning with a certain type of universe somewhere. And then I make the parallel. I was like, dancing is similar to that because you somehow create in those type of angles and movement, and then it's aligning with the type of universe. You, 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 are, you are in alignment with certain source that will help you experience something different. Then when you see how dancing started in Stanford um, uh, study, they say that people used to dance to form tribes. They don't form tribes, then dance. So it was the source that brought people together in community and uh, it made them feel part of something and, and become, uh, become, uh, it's like, and mate and etc. And today, like when you see like one of the best best way of to, to to meet other people like that you don't know before is to to enter into that dance with them. And you said it whether it's ecstatic dancing, free dancing, or whether you're dancing by yourself, whether someone else, you're somehow aligning. You're somehow playing with that energy, and and that's the basically the definition of dancing. When you mentioned before, I don't have a point to reach. That's exactly why you dance. Like you dance, not to reach a point, but you dance. You the dancer and the dance, the dance they become one, and that's how the Zen culture basically talk about give a definition of dancing. Something is not forced. I, I told you before, like, how this thing come to you? And uh, Alan Watts, the philosopher, talk about it, you know, like, way, no way, doing, not doing, which is when something comes natural to you. He said it's exactly when you don't s differentiate the dancer from the dance, you know. So, uh. Uh -huh. so uh, when we relate this to also purpose, is so like when you see someone who's doing dance moves and it's kind of robotic, you say, this is not natural. But when you see someone who's dancing and, and open and free, you'll be like, man, this is amazing because you can't, di di you can't, you can't um, differentiate the dancer from the dance. Wow. And then imagine now, like, if you reach that point in life where you dance, you can't differentiate the dancer from the dance, doing, not doing. It will give you what you need at the at the minute, and uh, it's not a coincidence. Certain people use dancing for spiritual purposes. The Sufis, the Sufis, they they spin, they spin, they spin, they spin, and that's their way, I think, of entering into the trance. Okay. Um, so what we are doing today, in a particular case, taking the dance classes, and it's a, it's a particular case of that. 
Maybe that was the real purpose. As I told you, yoga aligning with universes, Sufis turning and entering to a trance. Maybe we just learning to, uh, we through dancing to, to open up to a different universe. And I gave you my experience. Before dancing, I was an emotionless human being with the, with the all sorts of the words. It served me. It served me it's, uh, certain times in my path, but definitely that's not the way to, to live because you will miss on the deliciousness of life if you, if you don't, if you use only the brain model, not the balance between brain and heart. Got it. Mm-hmm. Is there a way that a person can enter a state of flow and enlightenment, whatever you want to call it, and then the purpose becomes the actual being. So for, for example, the guy who's dancing, and he is at the genius level of the, you know, the four levels you talked about earlier. He's at uh-huh. the genius level, uh-huh. let's say. And now he is embodying that genius in life. Everything he does is from this state of genius Mm -hmm. right because he's feeling that energy of dancing in everything he does you know brushing his teeth uh checking his email going to the grocery store like he is embodying the soul that that dancing soul is a person like that would he even think of the word purpose Mm. so uh, that's the normal state of a human being. Basically, what we are living today is not the normal state of a human being. Oh. It's, a, it's a model that was taught or somehow. Simple, look how many miserable millionaires, look how many stressed lawyers, look how many uh, uh, person who always feeling something is missing. Something is missing as opposed to a person who connected to a, a, a mission, something that come innate to them, he become, yeah, he would become that in, in everything because the, um, when well, I forgot the, the name of the writer, but she, she was a teacher who wrote so many books um, around the quantum healing, but he said, uh, she, she said that when when a person find the passion like or something they really like meant to do in their heart they they are not even supposed they, they won't get sick they won't get old they won't, they really become this alive they they will be that in everything and that's why when people say um like how to find my passion I was like no it's you become passionate because that's your natural. Your natural is this, look at the kids, right? This curious, full of energy human being who brings his passion wherever he goes or wherever she goes, but also it's not gonna allow anything less than that in their schedule. And kids, if they don't like you, they say, I don't like you. I'm not gonna spend time with you. I'm not gonna try to be nice. Right, and kids they they have this <laughs> playfulness, right? That's a characteristic of the creators. You have to be playful and curious. Yes, when you you mentioned brushing your teeth, yes, you know if you're being um, that, you have zest of life. You have you are full of health. You are full full of vitality. You would enjoy everything, and that comes to I told you before. I have a top. Top to bottom, if I'm fully actualized, even the food would taste better, even any task I do would taste better. But unfortunately, um, we're human beings, right? We get things on top of things and we, we, we lose the path. And uh, one, day, one day we get sick and it affects our, how, we, how we behave, we act. One day I hate my job and it affects how I behave and act. And, one other day I'm a problem in the relationship and that affects the way I behave and act. But the natural 
it is not that. That's why I told you before you it's kind of be a joke, but was put in question this model, <laughs> you know, that we are living in the hierarchy. The hierarchy, yeah. Man, mm -hmm. it's it's really hard for me to imagine a world like that because you know this is uh, Jordan Peterson is, is very very clear about this. He's like, look, hierarchies even exist in lobsters, and you know they're. God knows how many million, I don't know, 60 million years old or 40 million years old. And it's like, even they have hierarchy. Mm. So how can we not, like, we are, it's like a destination. And one, or, or like, a, it's a way of being. It's, it cannot be any other way. And the example he gives is, if you are sick, imagine a world that people do get sick, mm -hmm. which is our world. You're going to want a doctor who is more competent than a, another one. He, you, want a, you want the best doctor. Mm -hmm. So that's hierarchy. Without hierarchy and without judgment, we cannot exist as humans. Mm -hmm. This is one of his thesis, you know, one of his uh, theories. And I would like to have a world where we don't have a negative judgment towards people and so on and so forth. But... Is it even conscionable? The, I, I don't see it. I don't see it as, as possible because, I mean, the fact that different people are born in a different way, mm. different people have different IQs, right? Some children have autism, it, it, bipolar disorder, right? Some women, actually, a recent podcast I heard from Huberman, he mentioned that like 70% of pregnant women have at least one joint during their pregnancy, mm. which is like so bad for the child. Mm. A lot of women, they drink alcohol during their pregnancy, right? Mm. So a kid who's born out of fetal alcohol syndrome or some sort of defect in their brain because the, the mom smoked weed, that person could have a cognitive uh, uh, problem mm -hmm. in their life. And if that's the case, then in, an, in, an, in a hierarchy of competence, he would not be able to perhaps become a neurosurgeon. Yeah. <laughs> Just because he's play, these are the cards he was dealt. And he has to play those cards. Mm -hmm. So then, I mean, I, I, I like the view of equality and all this. And, and I, I definitely like the the purpose and everyone having the purpose, but man, it's just like when I was living in Brooklyn, I would talk to people all the time, right? Like the, 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 the guy at the post office, or the, whatever the guy at the Metro and man, those people have like two jobs, three jobs. They have to pay rent. You know, they have to travel like an hour and a half back and forth. They have a problem with their knee. Like it, it's like if people are born a certain way do you believe it's because of a previous life it's because of a transgenerational sickness or genetics or i'm just trying to understand your notion of anyone can do this mm. because i don't see it like that man i don't see there are people who will never even imagine what purpose is mm. i i didn't say that anyone can do this but anyone can be themselves. So, the the word when you said the hierarchy thing, you mentioned the doctor thing. Yes, the doctor can be the doctor, the neurosurgeon, which is amazing and fantastic, and we need it. But that same doctor, he he will need something else from someone else, correct? That it could be a different different thing. That doesn't make him hierarchically better. Ah. That's what I meant. I meant, you know. You mean it, generally? Yeah, generally. It make him overall. Mm -hmm, it make him being who he is being, and he's comfortable with it. And it makes the other person being who he is being or she is being. Okay. And they are comfortable with it. Now, you said, um, yeah, someone who's born with um, lower IQ and. Uh, they, they are doing different type of a job. They have three jobs. They have pain. They need for, for, for sure it exists. But what I said is the um, 
genes doesn't, uh, sorry, personality is not permanent. And um, if you are willing and open to, you may discover something that when you do or when you be that, it will be the most fulfilling for you. I didn't say you'll be the, mo the, high, the highest paid one. Got it. And that's why I gave the example of miserable millionaires, sure. billionaires, and you know a bunch of them. Sure. Right? Sure, sure. I have, you, you sit with a friend that doing great, burning the candle from both ends and, and uh, working hard and making money, but sometimes deep inside, but like, I, I don't want to spend like five minutes with this human being because the way they are behaving with me, right? So the way we are creating this hierarchy or the ranking or the way we are judging is maybe should be questioned, right? That there are, there is the IQ, uh, there are other ways you can, you can, you can judge people, right? I don't know, think about a mom who, who never went to school, but whose love is unconditional. My mom. How can you, how can you rate that compared to a neurosurgeon with high IQ? Right. She's being her, right? And he's being him. When that, when that neurosurgeon needs someone to give him unconditional love, he will never find it in another neurosurgeon, right? And, but when that mom needs an, a surgeon, she would find it in that doctor. Got it. Okay, so things fit. Yeah, so somehow. For for me, it's like about finding what makes you unique and be it and share it. Love it. That's the thing. One thing I learned from Rick Rubin, mm -hmm. the producer. Mm -hmm. You know this guy? No, I... he's like a white beard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rick he, Rubin he talks about creativity. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. He wrote uh, the Creative Way. Yeah, and. Uh, one of the things that stuck out at me is he said, what do you notice that other people don't? Makes sense. That. Attention. Go with that. What, are, what is something you feel, but like nobody else sees it? Mm -hmm. like, you guys don't see this? You don't see this? Uh -huh. um, go with that. Mm -hmm. That's your creativity. That's your uniqueness. So that's something... That uniqueness is what is the gift that you're talking about. Yeah, we, we, we are not the same, man. Like you, we can have the, the, the same educational background, the same parents, yes. same, but there will be always a, a something different. Man, like th this story I tell always, and I remember this moment because very well, my younger sister, one day I saw her, she was designing shoes. This is before YouTube time, bro. Like we were in Tunisia. We don't have even internet at home. I was like, what are you doing? She said, I'm designing. <laughs> I was like, how the hell you're doing it? But she said, it's easy. Like, no, it's not easy for me. I will never be able to do it. All right. So that's why I'm like, you may have something inside you don't know about. What you notice where you put your attention, what comes easy to you, um, take that and make it bigger and build the skills, see how can you give a service, be comfortable with it, not being a doctor, because that's the norm, right? Um, and, uh, and it's okay, charge money for it. Feel, feel, feel okay about it and people will pay you for it. So this is like, it's a, it's a whole uh, framework, it's a whole system, it's a whole process of self-discovery that someone can go through and they can, they can uh, connect to something. But the real problem is like, you know, like you mentioned this doctor thing, this come to my mind, like the identity. Right. When I left my, my, my first job at the hedge fund, first question my close friend asked me, but wh wh what do you tell people now? Right? Because people ask you, oh, what do you do for a living? If you're not comfortable being yourself, if you have been always thinking that you are your job, 
That's why I started the podcast. I said, I'm not my job. If I lose my job, I lost everything. I enter into a crisis. But if I know I am this awareness behind everything and um, I have something unique I can offer, and if you also start appreciating people also for their presence, right? Like when I say, when we say purpose, like we're not saying that you have to be a, like you do a big thing. You, that's your presence. But if you, if you may feel a void in your life, my invitation was like, try to discover and decide about the life direction. It could be being a mom or a dad, right? Because that's a purpose continuing into the expansion of this universe. Simple, right? But, but then it could be offering something uh, uh, unique to, to people. And there are so many amazing people in this world, right? If you, you see movies, you, you, you read books, you, you see some scientific breakthroughs, right? And all those people have decided that this, that's what they're going to do. And they accepted their uniqueness, unique abilities, better word, I think. Mm. Yeah. Ayub, the last um, the last topic I want to get into with with uh, us is no, okay, uh, okay. is the concept of travel, mm-hmm. and and the reason this is uh, something very makes me very happy is because when we, when way back uh, years ago you sent me a WhatsApp message mm-hmm. and you talked about uh, hey how is Mexico how is it living in this city how how is it to travel you know like you were you were you were asking you were curious yeah yeah uh about because you were thinking of you know leaving canada maybe exploring latin america and so on mm. take me through the journey um as someone who you know perhaps escaped um a certain trap or whatever a certain country yeah. however you see it and take me through how this journey helped perhaps change the way you see life mm, wow yeah 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 I have stuff to say here so um to start off if you notice like aura will talk is mostly like how you go inward you know know yourself know what you want that's one step and the other step is also to get outward and accept what life throws at you and be involved with it. And this is a concept I learned from uh, the writer of The Untethered Soul, I think, singer. Ah, uh, Untethered Soul. Yeah. And because I was like, yeah, it's like we live this life so self centered without accepting what life throws at me and I see it and I live with it. Okay. So that was actually part of me going out and living what life threw at me. Yeah, threw it, and I got involved with it. Okay, so when uh, I, I was in Canada, I had this desire. So in 2018, when, before even I leave my job, I answered the question, how I would say I would live my life. I would have lived my life, and that's including everything. People around you, weather, da, da, da. and I wrote clearly that I'm going to live in a place that is sunny. 2018, it has to be sunny. I know that I don't function at my best when it's eight months of uh, ice cold. I don't function at my best. I'm not friends with the, the ice, the, sorry, the, the, the cold weather. And I don't want to be, I don't want to be at my, not at my best best or at least okay performance why because there are things i want to uh, do there are things i want to be and i literally want to be the best when i'm interacting with whoever around okay so that's one but then in 2021 end of 2021 i had a new year event um uh, planned with a with a partner and then it was going to be a big one it's like a dream came through i I secured this amazing venue downtown Toronto. We basically hired everyone. We knew it's gonna be the night. New Year Eve party. I always wanted to do New Year Eve party because I have been doing some uh, event hosting as a, it's a passion, but I make money from it for truth, right? And it got canceled. 
uh, five days before, a couple of days before, and uh, um, because of the rules in Canada, and I got upset and I was like, I'm just going, right? So I took my suitcase and I had a friend who come to Playa and I, in Mexico and I, I went to Mexico and the journey started from there. Then comes the, the idea of uh, changing environment. Because when I went out there, I was like, I could have done this a year ago. Why have not done it a year ago? Because I didn't think it's possible. Back to the concept of mind slavery. I dig deeper. I was like, what is this concept now? Like, how can I help someone do the same thing? And when I dig deeper, dig deeper, I found there was one, one part that was keeping me there, which is attachment. So in order for someone to travel or to change environment, which is recommended to change environment, they have to work on their attachment to places to people, to even food. And uh, I one time I went to Toronto and I was questioning myself. And I was like, yeah, I'm not attached to anything here. Even my favorite restaurants, I'm not attached to them anymore. Right? And then comes to the the, the part where self honesty or radical honesty comes to to the equation here i looked at the time i spent in mexico and i compared my life there are those areas in my life that i look at this is better this is better this is better this is better yes so wh why 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 am i in canada it would be stupid to just stay there because of attachment now uh, now I'm in Mexico, then uh, um, when we talk about the journey of purpose, I say sometimes that like the life direction or your destination, think about it as stairs. You're not going to be shown the full stair. You will see the next step. If you step the next one, the the next one will show itself to you. So that was, a, it was a basically a leap of faith that someone moves and then you move and then life unfolds in magical ways, right? And you see again, your life, your life keep, keep improving until you get some messages that you, you reach a plateau or something. And then at the time you, you inquire again and you, you move again, or, or I'm not saying you move cities, right? You can move in, in consciousness, right? Um, with the concept of traveling, I noticed that everywhere you go, that city will offer you something different if you are open to it. And because even cities, it's also consciousness. It has its level of energy, its level of evolution is different, like even Earth. So what an interesting concept I came to is... <laughs> I was traveling and I'm like, yeah, this city is magical. Yeah, this city is magical. Yeah. But then I was like, second, it was me who was traveling. And I was like, well, the magic is in me. You know, how can I create magic anywhere I go? And then that's basically uh, like the latest thought about traveling that came to my mind. And this is my, my assumption for everyone. When a client comes, it doesn't matter where they are today. I, I, I know that they, there is magic in them. And um, um, my job is to, to never see them less than that. I see them that, and they, we can go and create it together, right? Um, yeah, so that's maybe my thoughts about around traveling. Um, we can link this to a concept of self image we didn't address before. So when we look at the mirror, you see your, your physical image, right? So if you want to fix your hair, you just do your hair. If you see anything here, you clean it, right? 
we close your eyes and turn around and you see the physical world the physical world outside of you that's the manifestation of your inner image we are in constant creation so instead of changing your hair you know, you can't break the mirror to change your hair you change your hair you can't change a city a whole city you can't destroy a whole city to change what's inner so if you are unsatisfied with the city or the place you are at go inside and look what's going on what's your inner image what you need to deal with and automatically you will either start experiencing the magic where you are at or you will automatically opportunities will show themselves and you will go somewhere else same thing with people same thing with jobs go inside that what you are experiencing is a manifestation is is the self pushed outside change what's within the self and you will either experience the same thing differently wind dire like when we change the things we look at change or we will change to a different place jimron if you're not if you don't like where you're at just move you're not a tree agreed and uh speaking of travel mm-hmm. the last question mm-hmm. when we travel out of our consciousness mm-hmm. and i'm referring to when the life ends mm. right and um i want to know your perspective whatever you truly believe about death yeah and life and what is happening when we travel away if if is there certain thing like that um how should we live and maybe prepare for that day mm. um or should we ignore it should we think about it all the time what is your because because your work is a uh, very it's it's beautifully arranged in a way that you are required to think deeply about everything mm-hmm. because you're handling you're handling people's destiny obviously not totally but you are facilitating creation how they how they imagine. create their life right yeah. you're facilitating that so how do you facilitate when when someone has maybe an existential crisis or their the fear of dying uh and 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 you can go back to the the book with the five regrets whatever you want but what is your personal mm. first hand belief about this yeah yeah well let's uh tackle that right so um dr araukens he say all fears comes down to the fear of death right a uh, napoleon held the six fears one of six biggest fears so one of them is the fear of death So I would say this like first if you die you die fully physically you die fully what's the opposite of death is life why you don't live fully so keep that in mind whether you're gonna die uh, um forever whether you're gonna reincarnate whether you whatever your belief about death it is fully and it is kind of final physically so why you don't start living fully too Okay. So now my belief about death and I, I you know like usually you would say only what you experience. Right? I haven't I have experienced um a glimpse of it in in the sense one time I was in a spiritual experience and I kind of uh crossed um and since that time i'm like i i really value this gift of life because when i was on the trip uh, it was hard to come back it was really It's hard DMT. Uh, it was something stronger 
and the chairman was helping me to come back because he's with me in the journey. And I remember the first time I, I see his shadow and but the first time I see the colors were ecstatic. The colors of the tree, the color of his dress, everything. So that's why I'm saying live fully, right? Because of the, if you cross, it's really a different path. Now, like it, I, the rest, what I could tell you is only about kind of research and stuff like, so I, I, what I believe, what I believe is I believe in reincarnation means when you, when you, when you, when you cross, you may get reincarnated in a different format or, or, or also could be a human, uh, and also human body. You can also stay in the spirit world. Uh, it depends of the choices that, uh, your higher self or your soul make, um, in order to continue your journey of growth. But when Ramdas was asked how many times the person like come back to life, he said, Ima imagine a bird taken like uh, in their mouth, uh, uh, like a small silky, sorry, a small, that's kind of, uh, oh my God, a, a small, taken a small, how oh, like, say, one sec, what we call a, uh, the thing we make material with, like fabric, yeah, like a thread, a thread, yeah. So when Ramdas got asked about how many times someone can come back to life, uh, get re reincarnated, he said, "Imagine like a bird taking taking a thread and turning around the mountain and to cover the mountain." <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how many times someone get live and they live and relive. And there are souls that are older. There are souls that are younger. If you are born to a dad uh, or to a mom, doesn't mean their soul is older than you. You could be in a different path and they are in a different path, right? Uh, uh, so that's, um, that's my take on, on the, the topic of death, but always the question of death when, when, when people can, you ask them that basically it wakes up certain people and you only, you only can be able to live only after experiencing death death to what right to the old death of the old or to the old to experience the new that's why uh i think in the bible they mention becoming the new man right um i think it's something like that it's basically when you die to your old beliefs and you create a new ones for yourself and that's about how you that you are it's possible for you to re reinvent yourself in every second how by dying to the old. That's it. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Continue to feel what the old is and chip away. I don't know if you know the saying by Rumi. Mm -hmm. He has this saying where he says, if you do not um if you do not polish the stone, when will you ever discover the the jewel, you know, the the treasure inside? So you're saying that old self continue to chip away chip away unbecome unbecome yeah and discover the real that's definitely yeah so the, the there is gold to everyone inside the, the the concept of the golden buddha i think they the story also as well um there was this tribe that they had a golden buddha they pray to and then they covered it with dirt because uh, there were some uh, invaders but then they forgot about it and generation comes and goes until one day there was a big storm and then that dirt can to cut uh, the, the storm took out the dirt and they see the gold. And that's exactly where that's exactly what I believe everybody has inside. So the storms, what, what you're living today, uh, sometimes challenges can take that dirt away or you can take it uh, consciously and you decide today and take a, uh, take one step in in the path of basically freedom, you know. That's great. Uh -huh. So self-proclaimed, self-created um, storms. Uh-huh. Which chip away at the dirt it, and bring the golden Buddha. You know, like, it could be storms, but it also it could be, it's a process of transformation consciously. I'm sure it will be less um, painful. 
Like because usually, unfortunately, people choose to change after a big event. What yes. are those big events? Breakup, divorce, lose a job, sickness, big trauma, sickness, accident. Right. The brain can rewire faster. Uh huh. See, because they have no choice. Or like psychedelic it, experience. Or yeah, you see exactly. So at that time they wake up and they say, "Oh, I was asleep." The morning. So now, what if you wake up? And it's a new morning, and you take a new start. Beautiful man, Ayub. Thank you so much for traveling to Tulum <laughs> for the podcast. Um, we've known each other for so long, and I've seen our brotherhood, our love grow. Mm -hmm. And and I hope that it continues. I hope you come back for a round two in the future. Um, yeah, man. Thank you very much for being vulnerable. Um, like just asking, asking and answering both everything from the heart mm -hmm. and really teaching people how to be free and find their purpose. And the fact that you've taken the responsibility of structuring this woo woo thing mm. about purpose and, you know, how the hippies have traditionally talked about it in, in a spiritual way. And you've really looked at the literature, looked at the books, done your own theories your own models and and best of luck uh, and congrats for having this ambition of writing Thanks. four books um, in the next couple of years man I, I can't wait to read them i can't wait to see your journey towards you know becoming uh, uh you know world famous new york times best-selling author <laughs> uh, i can't wait <laughs> It was a delight, yo. This this room is magnificent. The energy is amazing here. Thank you for asking the questions and uh, co-creating uh, this experience. Definitely, if one day we come for round two, I have other new stuff to share. Um, yeah, so uh, it, w it was magnificent, man. And the thing is, like, we're taking this responsibility because you know, like, it, it it's good to take ownership of your own life. One time I talked with a friend. He said they paid someone at eight grand and they tell them, okay, how to change your life. Okay, uh, go live your passion and quit your job. So good thing. Now you're in debt. <laughs> I don't want people to live that. I don't want people to be miserable at work and then end work and then end up with nothing. Right. So yeah, I took this. Uh, you bring this. a practical approach to things, like a real approach. Yeah. Not some fantasy world. Exactly. So I, I said like, uh, I'm a scientist, but I'm an artist at the same time. So I was working on the intersection between science, psychology, spirituality, and uh, adding a bit of wisdom to it. <laughs> That's great, man. And, and we're going to put in the show notes how people can find you. Let's say someone wants to take you on as a coach yeah. or at least just have a call with you to discover what lies you know, behind the curtain Oh. And, and and you know to get rid of that dirt and discover the golden buddha how what's the best way to reach yeah you? yeah so fantastic question so yeah i'm on instagram i hang out as uh, ayub yusuf okay uh, but i think with i actually don't take a client like uh, hey pay me i'm gonna pay. no so if you want to schedule a call we're gonna go on a call and it's not 15 minute discovery call i don't believe in that right come here i, I, I will serve you maybe 90 minutes, maybe two hours. Uh, if we find, we've, we'll find a time, we'll create a time and then we'll see if we'll get fit, good fit in the future. And usually I don't take a client at first or second sessions um, because I, I care a lot about with whom I'm working and because I don't need them. That's the, the fantastic uh, part of the equation because like when you see this industry, the coaching, like sometimes it, they come from a financial need things I don't and uh, that's how I designed my life I I really do this to serve um, so yeah so anybody is uh, willing to uh, connect uh, we can connect and um, schedule a call and we're gonna go full in right away uh, this is not introduction we do work and then if it is a good fit uh, you're we're welcome to continue later on yeah good man and I can personally say from my own personal experience and also the guys in Afro D who've come to you and they've given great testimonials. They've told me personally how amazing you are and how you've helped people find their purpose and, and live a more fulfilling life. So thank you for uh, helping all those people. And 
Thanks, man. Like uh, Afro-D has been an amazing uh, community. Like, uh, yes, I've had clients uh, looking for life directions. And also I have sex- I have had successful entrepreneurs who have made it everywhere, but they feel something is missing or they forgot a desire and they wanted to reignite it and see how they can add it to their lives. Um, it's, it's all sort of uh, people I met in this community. Thank you, uh, man, uh, for creating that. I know that it took you long years of uh, being open like that, like that and, and uh, deciding to take this as a mission. Thank you, buddy. You're we'll, welcome, uh, bro. We'll do a round two soon. <laughs> My pleasure. Yeah, for sure. We're done. Okay, man. That's, That's cool. <laughs>